Hey, welcome to Culturally Cancelled. I'm your cancelably cultured man, Russell Peters. Um, today with me are my two very good friends who, uh, who I, I, I thought I thought this would be fun to put two people uh, together. I like putting people together. And uh, so with me on my uh, right is, is Bentley Evans Sr., uh, creator of the Jamie Foxx show, uh, Martin, and many other wonderful TV shows. Legendary cat, kind of a bane in the ass, but whatever. He's my friend. <laughs> and uh, what just up, Ben? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. There you go. And uh, on my left is a friend of mine who I've known since uh, I guess we were teenagers. He was a teenager. I must have been in my early twenties mm-hmm. then. Yeah, you must have been like eighteen. I would have been twenty. I think yeah, so. Yeah. It was yeah. Only a couple of years separating us. And uh, and 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 he's a legendary cat from Canada, um, Mr. George Strombolopoulos, A.K.A. Yorgo, A.K.A. Strombo, my man. And we're here hanging out in the backyard. So if you hear helicopters and planes, <laughs> uh, that's real. We keep that shit real because we do the shit outside. And Bentley and I are having cigars. George is having a vegan coffee because <laughs> that's that's what fucking George is. <laughs> Courtney, our producer's here. Courting it up. She's Cord. a vegan or a freegan, as she calls herself. Yes. Sometimes I have milk. We'll see. Well, yeah, I'll, listen, I, I think I would do it if I could uh, If I could still have butter and milk and cream and ice cream. I'm like, you I could. It's I called a vegetarian. Oh, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or you could have oat milk. Yeah, you have you tried oat milk? It tastes like dog shit. I had oat milk the other day. It's not bad. Like no, nah, no. Nah, I don't want it's not good. bad. I want my milk to just taste like fucking water it doesn't taste like that <laughs> yeah i don't want no aftertaste from my milk. all right all right that makes sense you know i'll drink chocolate almond milk yeah because it's good. like yeah it's like having chocolate covered almonds in a glass yeah yeah maybe i'll do that tonight that's a good idea yeah <laughs> also eddie's here uh in case we have any questions we need uh eddie to do research on and uh we have um eddie's cousin ernisto is sitting in today ernisto so George and uh, Bentley were talking right before we got on the air to say, "Hey, save that conversation. Let's get that popping again." <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you're talking Just about. saying that I think that Jamie Foxx is the greatest living entertainer, and while I think there are a lot of people who can do a lot of things really well, I can't think of one person who can kick at the level that Jamie can in every single category, um, and also do it with this generosity of spirit. He's a powerhouse. And then after I said all that, you say, and he could throw a football the length of a field. Yeah. I didn't know that. So oh, like, really? he can do everything. He can do everything. He, he can, I mean, listen, the guy can sing. He's classically trained on the piano. Mm-hmm. He can sing opera. Uh, he can act his ass off. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Oscar says that. That's right. He can, uh, he's, you know, he can, like I said, he can throw football. He can play basketball pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he can do it all. And so I was trying to think about who is and his impersonations that? are dead that's, on. That's the other part, yeah. his impersonations. I, I don't, dead on yeah. when he did that fucking LeBron when I was dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That LeBron yeah. one, because I was like, that's when I didn't, when he did it, I was like, fuck. Yeah. That's when they said he's going to play Mike Tyson. I go, I could totally see him becoming Mike Tyson. Well, yeah. you know, my, my, my thought behind that was, is Jamie too old to play that? But he still ha- he still looks yeah. youthful enough to pull that yeah, off. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Jamie's the same age as Mike Tyson, isn't he? Yeah, but uh, he'd be playing <laughs> Mike Tyson younger. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. Jamie yeah. don't look like. I mean, Jamie could. Mike had a very mature look at 20. He did. You know what I mean? Mike didn't look like a 20-year-old kid. He looked like a grown pit bull. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Jamie also has this uh, ability to um, make people around him better on camera and a lot of times you see a really great actor and they steal the scene jamie doesn't steal scenes J- jamie creates a space where everybody wins on camera that's a really unique really unique ability yeah you know the the crazy thing about jamie is that you know he's he's a very generous guy when he likes you so yeah. he keeps his circle small mm-hmm. he uh he's he's very much a guy that's big 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 out in the out in the open but and you know and he's at home he keeps his circle small but the people that you know that he messes with <laughs> Those are the people that he messes with, and I've been working with him now for twenty uh, about twenty six years, and uh, our relationship. He, I feel like Jamie's like a distant relative. <laughs> he's like he's like my seventh cousin. You know what I mean? <laughs> You've known him a long time. Known yeah. him a long time. Yeah, at least about thirty years, just about. How about house party though? Because I was an usher at a movie theater when House Party opened, and that. Wait, were you were not House Party, Bentley? I was in House Party. Yeah. I'm gonna show you. I gotta show you this scene. It's. It, it won't go away. It's just still out there on the internet. Uh, I don't remember you in it. Yeah, so I'll tell you, and then you'll go, oh, maybe you remember that that the one little thing where in the bathroom, the toilet got clogged up. Oh, yeah, that you? Yeah. 
And, and they're all blaming me on clogging up the toilet. And I'm like, what me? You know, that kind of thing. And I'm like, look at the log in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was my first speaking role that actually made it to the screen. Amazing. I had a couple of other ones before that. You uh, got cut from? Yeah, yeah. Editing room floor on I'm going to get you sucker. Yeah. And uh, really, he was in I'm gonna get you. Sir. Yeah, yeah. I was. I worked on the whole movie. I was Keenan stand in, and he gave me some lines. Oh, nice. And then I, I got my SAG card in Hollywood Shuffle. I'm all through the movie, but I have no speaking lines. They see, cut yeah. out. They I think cut Hollywood Are you visual? Shuffle. Are you visible? In yeah, that? yeah. I was 19 years old. I'm visible. I'm visible in that movie. <laughs> that movie is that movie is the Bible in that it's a, it, it's a prophet. That movie. Like people need to watch that movie. Is one of our favorite movies ever. I didn't know that you were in that. Fuck, yeah, that movie's amazing. Yeah, that's how I got into business wow. through that through that film. So Robert wow. Townsend, right? Yeah, I yeah. dropped out. I dropped out of junior college to go work on that film. You made the right call. I think you so. made the right call. I, I so. had a meeting with. I was telling Bentley the other day. I had a meeting with Robert Townsend a couple of years ago, about two years ago, um, to see if he let me do a remake of Hollywood Shuffle, <clears throat> based from the my, my, from the South Asian side, right? Yeah, and call it Bollywood Shuffle, or whatever we would call it. You yeah. Know what I mean? <laughs> But I wanted to do it like to show that the exact same story exists with a different bunch of people. Right. How did he, how did he feel about that? He's he, he, he was like, you know, your story's way better. Like, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, I want to tell your life story. I go, that's great. That's a separate thing. But I really want to really do your movie. But I don't want to press him too much because, you know, I get it. You know, he doesn't want somebody to he's been he was been guarded with it for so long. Right. I mean, it's just such and a since I've never thing. done anything like that, I mean. I wouldn't trust me either for fuck's sake. You know, no, <laughs> yeah. I think you should make that film though, or a version of that film. I definitely would like yeah. to, but I would. I wanted his blessing to do it. You know what I mean? Because I didn't want to do it. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. I don't want to be that guy. Right. Yeah. And I respect Robert too much to just be a punk about it. Right. Yeah. 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 You could do. And it. he's so nice. I mean, you know. Oh my God, he's the so nicest nice. guy on the planet, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. I, I'm not going to do it. To, I mean, I'm not going to disrespe disrespect the guy ever. You know. I mean, everybody was in that movie. Everybody mm -hmm. was in Hollywood Shuffle. So Hollywood Shuffle, I think. Le le don't quote me on this, but I believe it was the movie that had the highest rate of Taft Hartleys to get into SAG through that film. So Robert goes on record for putting the most people in the Screen Actors Guild at that time. I don't know if it's been surpassed by right. now, but at that time, that was a fact. Amazing. And I was one of those folks, man, that slid in the door. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I didn't even know what a Taft Hartley was. It's just like, it's, it's almost like a waiver kind of thing. I guess it's like an induction. Yeah, where you get uh, accepted in. You know, so yeah, because you needed a certain amount of movies before, right, to do it. Well, it, but it, if you're a person of, of color, you needed less <laughs> because there was less available. Yeah, but the way the way that it works is, it's like uh, the Screen Actors Guild is is tricky. It's that it's that catch twenty two where you have to have a speaking role to get in. Yeah, but you have to have you have to get yep. in one to get a speaking role. That's right. So it's like. Uh, when you make an independent film and then that film becomes a union film, mm -hmm. everybody in the film has to become union. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's like a big foul swoop. Yeah, right. <laughs> Townsend shot this whole shit on his uh, on his credit cards. Really? Man. He yeah. told me that. Yeah. That's insane. You know what, it, Russell? It was so funny because I remember like Townsend would give us walkie talkies and say, "Go stand out on the corner of Pico and La Brea if you see the police coming." <laughs> Here's the code word because we did we had no no permits none. Amazing. Isn't that where the Winky Dinky Dog was? Yeah, yeah. No, on the Fairfax. Wink, not a Winky Dinky Dog. It Hold wasn't. On, there's a, my helicopter's flying by. Oh, well, that's okay. Hey, there's Russell's friend. Winky Dinky Dog. Winky Dinky Dog. Winky Dinky Dog. Because <laughs> the hoes got to eat too. Hoes got to eat. Oh, that movie. Whole oh cake, whole cake. John was incredible. Beats us <laughs> on Wednesdays. Feeds us on <laughs> Thursdays. And closes us on Saturday. Whatever the line was. No, um, w Winky Dinky Dog was on uh, Slauson and Western. It was this little small spot there. Right. And uh, every time I tell people that, they go, no, it wasn't. It was, I'm like, I was there. Trust me, I know where it was. Because <laughs> there's a spot on Fairfax that looks like it. Mm -hmm. Is it Okie Dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's Okie Dog. But no, Winky Dinky Dog was just this little shithole man and it had this little area with like it was fenced in it was really weird man uh it was right in the smack and it was a real place of, yeah but it wasn't called that right no obviously not yeah, yeah yeah but it was just some yeah smack dab in the middle of the hood yeah yeah that's where you want to shoot in the, yeah oh yeah in the mid 80s <laughs> shoot and get shot yeah, yeah. <laughs> two shootings one <laughs> one bill <laughs> 
Yeah. And it was amazing. What was that like, though, shooting then there, knowing that it was independent and knowing that no one was making films like that? Well, you got to understand, I, who knew what, I didn't even know what independent meant. I yeah. don't know any of that stuff, man. I'm telling you, I was at Santa Monica College fucking up, man. Yeah. You know, like. What were you taking? I don't even remember, Probably man. Acid. I'm, I, I, you know what I did? It, I used to go to Santa Monica because they had great pancakes in the, in, in the, you know, like in the little cafeteria. So I used to go meet my friends and we would just sit outside and just bag on everybody that walked by just talking shit. And so I was good at that. Yeah. And uh, my buddy met Robert Townsend and he said he wanted to volunteer on his film. So he, he called me up and said, hey, man, you want to be in Hollywood? And I was like, eh, that shit sounds corny, right? Was Robert in anything before that? Yeah. Soldier Story. That's right. Yeah. That's the first place I ever saw him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when I went over his house and met him for the first time, I was like, oh, shit, that's dude from Soldier Story. You know what I mean? But he was so cool, man. Real cool, dude. So did he answer the the door in his bath bathrobe for you or his towel? Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, you have your facts right. <laughs> I um, so my Courtney's buddy, a factor. She's a factor. In this. There, this was some crazy shit. Now, I mean, I'm not going to take up. This is not about me, so I'm not going to make up take up that time. But I was... Right before I went to Robert's house, I was in the middle of a of a shootout. There was literally some some gang members shooting at this park, and me and my buddy Tommy were underneath a car trying not to get hit. Right, this guy comes up there with this low rider. He gets out. He's got a a sawed off shotgun. He's just letting a pow pow. He's just letting off shots. Just wide spray from that gun too. You can't even run from that. You can't run from it. Yeah. And 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 some other cats are trying to be brave. Like, no, no, you didn't go come to my neighborhood and do all. Man, yeah. I was like, this. Get under the car. Yeah. So after it was over, you know, we were just talking about, damn, man, our life could be over just like that, right? And he goes, uh, you ever heard of this dude named Robert Towns? And I said, no. And he goes, well, he's doing this movie, and uh, I can introduce you if you want to get in, because man, you know. Man, we're going to get killed being on the streets. So we literally... And you weren't even from the hood. That's the best nah, part. Nah. Well, you know what? So the hood is so funny in L.A. because all the hoods got palm trees and shit. So you can't even really determine what's It's a tough one to have a distinction with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I was from the hills, Windsor Hills, but just below was Crenshaw. Right. And they did not play. They knew we weren't from there. Get your ass back up that hill, hills boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then we went to Robert's house right after that. Tommy goes, let's go meet this guy. So we Where was went, Robert living? Robert was living on, uh, on Crenshaw. Oh, he was in the hood. No, no. He was way up Wilshire. Mm. So he was living on a street called Windsor, mm -hmm. uh, one block over from, uh, from Crenshaw. Mm. And he had a nice little apartment and... Uh, so we go up there and knock on his door. You know, we don't we, we don't know. I'm 19 and he opens the door and he's got on a towel. He just got out of the shower and he's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, we, you know, we we came to uh, you know, we we came to sign up for Hollywood." He said, "What?" Uh, and then Tommy walks up behind me. "Hey, Robert, remember me?" And he's like, "Yeah, what what, what do you guys want?" So we were like, "Man, we want to be in the film business. What what do we got to do?" And so Robert says, "Well, you know what? Tomorrow if you're serious, you'll be here at 6 a.m. and you'll have a, bo a box of donuts. I'll know you're serious then. So I went and got that money from my mom's. Yeah. Got that donut. And I was there at 530. And mm -hmm. I was like, yo, man, I'm, I'm down. So he taught me just by working on that, sh that movie all about show business. You think, though, how if he didn't, if he wasn't open to that, how different your life might have been? Just the fact that there's this guy with a bit of experience. He wasn't super experienced either at the time. Right? No, he just wanted to make something. He's he passionate. Passionate. And he looks at you and he's like, all right, you want in, you can get in. Just an act of kindness from somebody. Well, I mean, it wasn't that easy because he wasn't he wasn't extremely friendly towards me at first. He was always a nice guy, but yeah. it was like... Was I was a little kinda, apprehensive. Yeah, and I was like a pest, you know, like, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm around hanging out. You're like and 19, I'm, right? Yeah, 19. And I'm like, Rob, can I come over tomorrow? And he's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but look at what happened yeah I mean you know after I worked on the film for two years for free and so that movie took two years yeah a little bit longer about two and a half years but so it came out in 87 so he must have shot in 85 he started shooting it in 85 he wow. shot you know pieces when he could afford to buy more film ends and, yeah. and stuff so it just took that time you know it was like shoot three days now we'll get some money we'll shoot in about a month and it, it was very sporadic how, wow. how it No, it wasn't like a really full, proper film shoot. Oh, no, 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 no. It's no. a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still a masterpiece, that mm -hmm. film. That was a great movie. Yeah. Because there's that, you know, Eddie Murphy scene. And then there's the audition scene, remember? Yeah. Where's, give me your wallet. Give me your wallet. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's the, the School of Black Actors. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
black acting school. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the same shit the Indian guys are going through. Like, I mean, I, I honestly feel like my agents get like a call and it'll be like, uh, we're looking for like a Russell Peters type. My own agents probably be like, we got Aziz. I'm like, well, that's hilarious. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> we need a Russell Peters type. <laughs> yeah. hmm. We have Russell Peters. Mm-mm. Got anything else? I'm like, you just said fucking Russell Peters. I mean, you know, whatever. But that's the way the business goes. It's it's a, such a shitty business. It's a shitty business. It I, is. Uh, I'm also really interested to see what kind of independent movies that what scene comes out of India at, at, at some point, because there's so many experienced crew there. They make films at an unbelievable pace. Yeah, but I mean, it depends on. Uh, now here's the thing, and when you get to the crews, it's got to be like, hold on. Plane. David, <laughs> the plane. It's like playing hockey in Canada. Car. Car. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, because uh, like the, they shoot very differently, so the way they light yeah. is different, and so to get them to make that adjustment to try and make cinematic movies as opposed to Bollywood films right. is going to be the trick. And that's that's where you get the new blood in, you know? That's the new kids who come in with the different ideas. And I remember interviewing Amir Khan, and he he created a big stir because he just wanted to shoot one movie a year because everybody expected to shoot so many films there. And he's like, no, I'm just going to do one movie a year. But I know actors in Hollywood, big stars like him, they're not doing a movie a year. Right. There's no chance they're going to work a couple them. of years. Yeah. Right. You know, right. That's true. the pace there was just out of control. Oh, yeah. They shoot, and, they, and there's no hours. There's not like, oh, we're going to do a 12, 12 hours, guys. We're done. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Is it true that they uh, can shoot a film from beginning to actually having, having it in the theater in, in a month? I don't know about that, but I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. You know, they're on that soap opera schedule, maybe, right? It's kind of how soap yeah. operas roll. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's what so they're doing. Don't the actors get their fucking lines the day of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, do, they get right? one take to, to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's crazy, and and people make fun of them. I'm like, you can't make fun of them. Right. The, you're literally watching a cold read. Right, and they're beast at it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, they're the hardest working people in Hollywood for sure. Yeah. In, in terms of in the film business. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actors are it's very difficult anyway. That's why I knew the day I met Robert what I wanted to do. I knew that I don't want to be an actor. Let's just start there. I want to be creative. I want to write. I want to produce and direct. I knew that the the very first time I set foot on a set, the acting thing, you know, I feel very lonely. You know, that's that's the thing about what Russell does going up on stage and doing stand up. It's the scariest place that I could imagine being. You don't have to imagine it. You used to do it. Yeah, but but never, (laughs) never in front of an arena full of people. Oh, man. I know. But that's a different time. I mean, you've already put in your work and. Now you know they're already there to see you. The, the reason you get nervous is because you're not sure how they're going to react to you. When mm-hmm. you're playing if in front you know of a they're small already group. there for you, you're mm-hmm. like, well, all I got to do now is not disappoint them. Right. <laughs> That's literally your only, your only goal at that point is do not disappoint these people. 16,000 people came to see you because they like you. Don't fucking let them down. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, back in the day, I saw, I saw Russell at a place called Yuck Yucks in Toronto, which is, was at Young and Eglinton, kind of a, a famous comedy club in the city. It's the club Jim Carrey started at. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. And it's a small basement club, right? Um, and I saw Russell there. This is, I mean, forever ago. And then decades later, one subway ride down, you sold out the hockey rink. You sold out the, the home of the Raptors. Oh, yeah, yeah. A couple nights in a row. And it was just a subway ride down. So I was just thinking about how. I remember seeing Russell. You and you think you hosted that night too? Probably. Yeah, and it was just a small night. Yeah. And then decades later, this and no comedian in Canada has ever pulled off what he's done. Yeah. To be able to do that, arenas across the nobody can do that. No, only Russell. Not to toot my own horn, but seven times. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so <laughs> that's right. But I mean, what do you? I mean, I do want to get the facts out there. Yeah, but I mean, since we are talking about it, guys, I'm just saying. How is that though? I mean, seriously. for when it's your hometown, it means more to you. Yeah. I, yeah. I can't. I mean, I can't understand how that happened. It was a meteoric rise for you. So, what do you attribute that to? The, um, well, it's different. See, in Toronto, I had already had like the local following. Mm-hmm. Like, I was already like, in, in the, especially in the black community in Toronto, I had it, that was like that's where I grew up. That's the people I grew up with. And then Kenny Robinson started a black comedy night on Sunday. He started in April of '95, mm-hmm. and. Uh, and that's 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 what really I found my I found like, oh, I could be me up here now. So once I found out I could be me up there, that's when I 
I really started working hard on those shows because I would want to do a different set every month. You know, in, in the United States, so much of comedy is based around race, right? And yeah. there's so much about that. That's not really how it works in Canada. You have had a little bit of the French English stuff, but you didn't. You don't really have a lot of comedy based on race, and no one feels comfortable going on and being hyper offensive unless it's that old school white guy kind of offensive, yeah. which yeah. quickly played out. So Russell, I, I mean, from my perspective, watching you, you rise in 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 the game was you were able to and comfortable enough to say things that people wouldn't say, but you never came across as a guy who had a background privilege or racism in you. You just, for obvious yeah. reasons, but you showed up and you said shit that people wouldn't say and Canadian comics wouldn't do what Russell did. And because he's international and the neighborhood that he grew up in Brampton. So I'm, I'm from Malton, which is right next door. He's in the town next to me. It, oh. It's very, um, it's very ethnically diverse, but it's still very much, you're your own ethnicity. Hmm. So you didn't... Well, especially at the time we grew up, in the 70s. Yeah. I mean, my town was um, blue-collar as fuck. Big time. And it was... Yeah. Auto like plants white. up there and... Yeah, white, really white, like white, trashy white, and black. Mm -hmm. and But immigrant black, like Caribbean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and there was not very many Indian people at all in my hometown then. <clears throat> They were my, they my hometown, Malton. Well, Malton was really Italian at one point. And then it became very Indian, and all the Italians moved to Woodbridge, the neighborhood yeah. over. <laughs> Your town became a mirror of my town yeah. because it became really Indian and became really, really black. And then I remember like uh, in like 84, uh, Westwood, your school. Did you yeah. go to Westwood? I went to Ascension, but 83 is when I moved there. Oh, Malton. really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, Westwood, I remember they came to play us. Uh, I think one of their teachers was a wrestler and one of our teachers was a wrestler and they wanted to wrestle each other so the yeah. schools got together and I remember it was breakdancing time and this one guy came and they came and they were like they had a guy named Billy a white you remember a white guy named Billy from Malton he was his b-boy guy this was this white guy named Billy I forgot his last name but Billy was the, the coolest white boy I'd ever seen in my life mm -hmm. like he had all the fly shit on he came to a house party in Brampton I was like, yo, who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> he had on like the dope shell toes with the perfect fat laces, the perfectly creased fucking straight leg jeans. He had like, I don't know if they were red or whatever. Yeah. He had like the cool pants on. Remember they were two-tone, one color in front, one color at the back. Oh, I love it. And he had so on hype. like a white golf glove and a and the right Kangol and the Kazals. I was like, and he was dancing the right way. And I was like, yo, I want to fucking look like that guy. And where is Billy today? I don't know where he is <laughs> today. But I was just like, yo, that motherfucker was cool but, as shit. And like, and he wasn't getting hate from nobody. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like even the black dudes was like, yo, that's a cool motherfucker right there. <laughs> I think he even had a cane with him. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> just on some cool shit. And you're like, God damn, how did he get all that? They were really interesting neighborhoods because it was it was so diverse, but you were your own thing and no one was trying to be you know, you, you, it's Canada, but you were your ethnicity. Sure. You were your ethnicity first. Um, yeah. And I think that really, that really resonated. L.A., uh, it's, it's funny. It was a whole different experience. You know, he said uh, it was a lot of black immigrants there. Yeah. I don't think I met a black immigr yeah. <laughs> immigrant until I was an adult down well, there. And it was Caribbean, right? So, yeah, yeah. It, Jamaican, uh, Trini, Haitian, yeah. like, that was our, that was the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, I didn't Haitian. even know. We didn't really there. have that many Haitians. We they were mostly Haitians. in Montreal. Yeah, we you? had Haitians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah Jamaican, Trini, Guyanese. I, I met yeah. all those. A lot of Asians. Guyanese, yeah. There but, was this one dude that punched me in my face one time. He was from Jamaica. He was a big fucking guy. He wore a size 13 in the sixth grade. And I was talking <laughs> shit to him, and I and, and my friends told me to hit him with a can of Seven Up. So I had a can of Seven Up in a in a paper bag, mm -hmm. and he said some shit to me. Uh, you know, we were teasing him about his shoes and shit. And I and he he ran up on me, and I swung this thing at it, and the bag ripped, and the and the can soda flew went somewhere. Oh. And he punched me right in the face. You had yeah. it coming. You had it coming. <laughs> and you were more mad about losing the Seven Up. Yeah. <laughs> that was my. That was the fucking roughest part because. Black dudes are fucking growing up is it they play different and you'd be enjoying your fucking I remember eating an ice cream sandwich. We walking home from the store and I'm at that last bite and motherfucker slapped my hand. I want I saw a red. I wanted to fucking kill him. I chased this motherfucker home after I was so mad. It was the last bite. And he was, and was laughing his ass. Oh, yeah. He's so mad. Why are you so mad? <laughs> Motherfucker, I was enjoying the shit out of that. <laughs> and I didn't have money to go get a second one. Yeah, I'll tell you a funny story uh, that happened to me. Mm -hmm. I'm at Baskin and Robbins, and 
Same thing happened to me. I ordered, like, I saved my lunch money and mm -hmm. went to Baskin Robbins, and I had a hot fudge Sunday or something like that. And I brought it out, and I'm talking shit. Yeah, yeah I got the Sunday. Fuck them little cones. I got yeah. the Sunday. And this one dude said, bap, and knocked it right out of my hand, right? <laughs> Watch this. Here comes this root beer brown Mercedes Benz, big body, pulled into a parking space. And Magic Johnson gets out the car. And I said, oh, shit, it's Magic. This is when Magic's 1920 second year yeah. with the Lakers, when he's a superstar oh in LA. My God. And I, I said, hey, what's up, Magic? He said, what's up? I said, man, he, he motherfuckers knocked my ice cream out of my hand. He said, oh, damn, that's a tough break there. That's a tough break. So he said, come on inside. So he, he bought me another one. Come on. Wow, that's dope. And I've never told Magic the story. You really should tell Magic That's the story because you guys are friends. Yeah, I've never, I've never told him that story. Oh I don't know God. why you've never told him that story. Because I always forget about it. Because it's like I met him on a, a whole different, right. uh, you know, level. So it's like you forget about that until he said that story. That's I forgot magic. about that. I was in LA when I was eighteen. I don't, I didn't meet Magic, but when I was eighteen, I was walking down Hollywood Boulevard, and this car pulls up beside me, like a Bentley pulls up beside me, and this guy in the back goes, "Son, son, son, come here, come here, come here." And I look over at the car, and I'm just a teenager, and I, I walk up to the window, and uh, this guy says, son, I want to introduce you to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I looked at him, I went, you fucking little Richard? And he's like, oh, how about he's that? like, I am. And I said, okay, what? He said, have you met Jesus? And I went, Mr. Richard, my mother's really religious, so I, I have, I have, I grow up around Jesus. Like, <laughs> like well, I want to give you my book. And I said, okay. And he hands me his book, and he shakes my hand, he holds it, and then he says, God bless you, son, and the car peels but away. But does he say it more like, no, son, let me introduce you, to, I gotta introduce yeah. you to Jesus, He was son. very little rich. I'm gonna introduce oh, yeah. you yeah, to Jesus. Yeah, I didn't want to do that voice, but yes, I'm <laughs> glad you did. It was very yes, little rich. Yes, honey, yes, come meet Jesus, he's in the back seat. It was incredible. Louis like, Anderson has a really great little Richard story. <laughs> Louis, I don't know the story, I don't remember the story clearly, so I don't want to butcher it, but... He told me a really funny Little Richard story one night. Yeah, Little Richard used to just roll the street. Yeah, apparently yeah. handbooks. There was one stuff. of those yeah. types of stories yeah. as well. Yeah, you know, right. he lived next door to the comedy store. Yeah, that's exactly what he told me. Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah he said in, in the Rock and Roll Hyatt. Yeah, he yeah. did for uh, many years, and not like a high up, but like a third or fourth floor or some shit. Yeah, he just had a spot. Oh, I love that. I so love I wonder, do you think they paid for him to live there? Like the hotel just gave him a break because it's Little well, the Richard? fucking label probably paid while they were robbing his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Shady ass record labels. Yeah. Little Richard, the best, the, the, you know, the king of rock and roll. He, he, I worked with him once. He did an episode. He did an episode of Martin. He did played he? this uh, rat exterminator, oh. and he had on this blinged out jumpsuit, and he came and played the piano, and he was. He called me Tolly. This is what he said to me. He said, "I said, hey, how you doing, Richard?" He goes, "Hi, Tolly." Oh yeah. <laughs> Hi, Tolly. Hi, Tolly. <laughs> and so he 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 he, uh, he said. He's, what did he say? He, he said this little saying, and I stole it, and I did it on the Martin Show. He said, he's a small piece of leather, but he's so well put together. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did that when I played this. Uh, played the gay guy on the yeah. Martin Show. I was hitting on Martin, and I, and I used that line on him, and it scored. Oh, that's that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, Little Richard's it, man. Little Richard, you know, learns from Esperanza, but essentially, be, is, but I heard someone say, when he passed that, he was like the king and the queen of rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Like Little Richard, that's what they said. Like Little Richard is kind of ground zero for all of us. For music, I mean, really, yeah. I mean, you know what's funny is because of the music he made, nobody ever really made a big deal about him being gay. I don't think ever it was ever mentioned while he was alive. No, I don't recall it. Yeah, no, no, yeah, it was just great. It was just like inspiration. Yeah, it was inspiration. Yeah, so he, he, he inspired like everybody, yeah, everybody, man. everybody, him yeah. and Chuck Berry. Yeah, what about uh Hendrix? Mm -hmm. I'm sure Hendrix had a little bit of that from him, and so did uh, what's our other guy? Uh, uh, Prince. Prince. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Prince. For sure. Come on. Yeah, man. for Prince sure. Prince is obvious. Yeah, yeah. yeah Prince sure. even said he loved Little Richard. Yeah. yeah. Like the fl uh, like all the flash of of yeah. Little Richard, and then he liked the the funk of Rick James, and yeah, he was and, and the guitar style of Jimi Hendrix. You know, Prince had Prince never once hid who his inspirations were. Yeah. And you never felt like Little Richard was trying to play somebody else's game for music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Little Richard. We were playing his game. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was all him. I saw him in concert once with Chuck Berry, and it was wild. Had to be. Yeah. Oh, you saw Chuck Berry live, too? Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley. Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, Little Richard uh, one night, and Jerry Lee Lewis was supposed to show up, but they said he got sick. I found out later. I interviewed a guy in his band. They think he was just too fucking high to make the plane. What but year was this? 
it was like 89, 88, something like oh, wow. that. And he was yeah. still too high? Yeah, that's what that's what his <laughs> bandmate said at the time. Yeah. But but Chuck Berry was obviously and mean too. Chuck was mean, which is what I liked about him on stage. He didn't give a fuck. He turned he was at the uh, Skydome in Toronto and everybody was playing to this big background monitor. Chuck Berry was like, That's not rock and roll, turn it off. So he everybody had to look at him on the stage. You could barely see him. <laughs> wow. But yeah, he was just amazing. And Bo uh, Diddley too. But little Richard slayed. Had to be. Yeah, it had to be incredible. Slayed that show. I think there the, wasn't there a Chuck Berry sex tape that came out? <laughs> yeah, I think it was. Yeah, uh, it was. It, well, I think he had cameras at his theme park. Yeah, so no, at his house. It was in his. Uh, no, I think he used to like the uh, he used to like the shit on girls or some yeah. shit like that. Or he apparently he had cameras above the toilet so yeah. you could watch the flush. Yeah. Oh man, I was man. watching an episode of Ain't that, that some shit American <laughs> American Dad and there Eddie, was Eddie pulled it up and you spelled Chuck Betty. I think Eddie. Hey Chuck Betty. There it is, right there. You know, I, I heard... Oh, yeah, there's a chick eating his ass, I think. Hilarious. That's fucking gross. Can we wow. talk about some nasty shit? Oh, here like he's that? pissing on her in the other one. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chuck, oh, that shit's Chuck, nasty, Chuck. dog. But he could play the hell out of the guitar. I would yeah. describe what we're all looking at, but I don't think anyone really wants to know. No. Um, Google yeah. it. Google it. There are dirty things about Chuck Berry. Um, I there's, heard some, there's some foul Googles out yeah. there. <laughs> Remember when I showed you... Did I yeah. show you the one last night? Yeah, you did. Which one? Uh, 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 um, you showed me something. What, what was it that? Uh, no, no, you told me about it. Yeah, when you you Google uh, this is, but wait, this is so this is uh, somebody sent me this and I go, why would you send me? I don't even know like. No, no, you it, didn't show it to me. Oh, get your phone, Ben. I'm not even gonna tell you what it is. Okay. Go to Google. <laughs> okay. And now in your search, type in uh, science fiction movie <clears throat> made. Or is it space movie? Space movie. Space movie made in 1992. Well, this is fun. People can play this at home. Yep. Space Don't get mad movie. at me. I didn't. I didn't come up with the with what what the answer is. So it is. Oh my god. I can't say what uh, gay nigger. That is hysterical. <laughs> and see, I can say it. I can say that. Yeah, that's why I let you do it. So he let me say it. Yeah, so read I the title. It's gay nigger 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 nigger. Mm. Gay niggers from outer space. I have to see that. <laughs> Like, that's the answer for space movie made in 1992 oh my on goodness. Google. Have you seen? No, movie? but somebody sent me that and I go, I, I go, I, and somebody put, I thought it would have been Apollo 13. It got, <laughs> look, it got, it got six out of 10 on IMDb. Yeah, so, 80% like this movie. There you go. We like have it. to have a movie night over here and watch that shit. Uh, extraterrestrial beings travel the galaxy to free men oppressed by females to make way for an entirely <laughs> homosexual society. That's it's an important funny. film. It happened. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I well, wonder you know if what that it works if you told Siri, if you asked Siri, you think that that would be the answer? I wonder if Siri, yeah, Siri couldn't say I'm that word. I'm going to ask her. Siri yeah. can't say that word, right? Let's 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 see, let's, no. let's see what let's see what but Siri says. Inter- you know, I thought they were connected. I always thought that the internet and Siri were let me, connected. Let well, when you say it on Google, it always spells it K N I G G E Knig. Wait, <laughs> Wait let's see what happens. Ready? <laughs> hey Siri. What space movie was made in 1992? May the odds of these movies being what you wanted be ever in your favor. MST3K, Teenagers from Outer Space. MST3K, Manhunt in Space. No, it doesn't come up on Siri. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it I'm, only comes up on times, Google. I'm grateful that it doesn't. Yeah, come up gay on niggas that. from outer space is the funniest shit I've ever heard in but my wait, entire but life. Master Fat Man, I'm just looking at a picture from far away. Is What's the a white guy? Yeah, is he a white guy? The, the gay director? ambassador, it says. He's a Danish, Danish guy, a white guy that made that movie, directed that film. Wow. Yes, I, don't know mm. if part of it. I think mm. he's the director. Mm. No. I, I mean, I don't know. I just I don't oh, know yeah, how to feel about that. Yeah, he's the director. I feel badly about that. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't sit well. <laughs> no, it doesn't wow. sit well at all. Master yeah. Fat Man. Oh Although God. all the other space movies were also category, it was like you know, teenagers, and there was, like, from space. It was always someone from space. Right. Remember Homeboys in Outer Space? <coughs> yeah. Wasn't that in, like, 94? Uh, Homeboys in Outer Space came in 96. Was it, it 96? It, that it, late? It, look, Wasn't that Flex? It was Flex. Flex and Daryl Bell. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name that uh, that created that show. I know him, too, a brother. And uh, we went to a screening of this film, right? They were showing all the new film. I mean, TV shows that were coming out, and they played the pilot to that. And I just remember Chris Rock was in the theater. 
and he was just heckling. He kept going, bring me the head of the man who allowed this show to be made, <laughs> right? <laughs> but he was doing it under the seat, and, and we're laughing so hard. Uh, it was it was really bad, a really bad idea, man, really bad idea. Homeboys and our remember yeah, I, Rickety Rocket? The Rickety Rocket was my favorite car too. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember that. Rickety Rocket was like this. It was a a cartoon about these spaceships, but they were in the ghetto, <laughs> and the spaceships had these big lips, oh my and they goodness. were. It was like the most stereotypical shit. That you got to look up Rickety Rocket. That shit did not oh, play yeah. in Canada. No, I, it it not when I was have. a kid. That did yeah. not reach us. No. Yeah. Wait, Eddie, Google Rickety Rocket. And the oh, rockets, man. the rockets would fly, and smoke would be coming out the back because they were all fucked up. Oh and, my goodness! And they used to talk like, "Yeah, man, <laughs> hell yeah!" And the rockets talked. You got to, you, you got to see. Watch, do you watch Black Jesus? I saw Black Jesus. Yeah. I saw the first season. You know, I'm a Who's big in Charlie. Black Jesus again. Charlie Murphy Charlie was in Murphy, there. Yeah. John uh, Witherspoon was in there. Spoon was in. I forgot yeah. the guy that played. You, he's a comic. Yeah. Um. What's his name? Uh. It it gets really good. Yeah. Black Jesus. But how hard. old is it? It's, I think they've done three seasons, right? Is yeah, but it, they seasons? started doing it about 2010, yeah. somewhere around there. Oh, it came out late. Yeah. Is that Rickety Rocket? Rickety Mom. That's Rickety Rocket. Those are the people that drove the rockets, but you got to see the rocket ships themselves. Oh they had my big God. ass. Wow. Ass. Yeah, there it go. There it go. God damn. Oh, my God. And the rocket is... would talk and shit, and it would talk like in this jive black. It got big boy. ass teeth on it. Yeah. Kind of looks like the magic school bus. But yeah. like, but yeah. racist. But, oh. yeah. Right. But a racist one. You know, it, it all makes sense to me now because. When Greg Nice said that, a rickety oh. rocket was my favorite cartoon after marriage, the honeymoon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, ah, that all makes sense now. So I wonder if maybe he got, uh, uh, Eric is his name. I wonder if he got the idea for Homeboys in Outer Space because of that. It could be. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, hey, wow. we should make a live action of this. <laughs> <laughs> and at that time, remember, Homeboys was like a new hip word. Yeah. Homeboy. <laughs> Are these your homies? <laughs> That's when white people got all. I know some street. <laughs> I think about the words we used to use, and the, like only a few of them lasted. Dope is a word that stuck Still around. There. Yeah. Still yeah. there. What about fresh? Fresh never made it. Deaf never made it. Mm -mm. Fresh to deaf never made it. Mm -mm. Nope. Posse was the word that everybody used all Posse the time. Posse went away. Posse yeah, yeah. went away. Yeah. Yeah. Homies. Homies is still around. Homies is bit. sort of around, but yeah. it, it can be misconstrued. It could be misused. Yeah, it turned into dogs. Yeah. No, my dogs. Yeah. It went yeah. from those my homies to those my dogs. And then peeps came and went a little bit because it started getting. Here's the thing: when white people started abusing it, we go, "Okay, it's got to go. It's got to go." Yeah, 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 yeah. You saw Jack on Jack in the Box, the Jack in the Box commercial. He he comes in in this new commercial. The first thing he says is, "What up?" Oh my god! I said, "Jack," they say, "What up?" <laughs> yeah, it's about to go. What up is about to leave. Yeah, what up's on his way out. <laughs> once once Jack in the Box is what upping you. You don't want to get one up to buy one, well, buy a what up. <laughs> I was I was getting ready to say they pro they shortened it, you know, but because uh, that's sup, you know, that's sup. all they say. That's sup. Yeah. sup, sup. I hate the <laughs> slangs today. The new the new slangs. I don't like them. They're horrible. Which one? But yeah. lit, lit, you know, like lit, lit. Yeah. fire. Yeah. Yo, that's just fire. Yeah. I get I feels. get fire because fire came from hot. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. The yeah, feels. Yeah. But yeah, the feels. All. Uh, the feels bothers me. I got the feels. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't yeah. like that. It, but fire is so misused, and this is no, this is real talk. When my friend's son came here, I brought him to the house, and he looked at the pool. He goes, "Yo, that's fire." I go, "You need to learn your elements. That's <laughs> fucking water. <laughs> that is the exact opposite of fire." <laughs> what were the words that we were using though in our era that the cats before us hated? Probably fresh, deaf, fresh, deaf. dope. Uh huh. Death Ill. for sure. I mean, Ill. Death, I yeah. still say ill though. Yeah. I think ill was very New York. It, we well, you know, I was yeah. East Coaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We didn't. Oh, say that, that shit is ill. I still yeah. say it's I ill. I still say ill too. Eddie makes fun of me because when I meet people, especially from New York, I was like, "Yo," uh, I'll be like, "Yo, you got my math?" And like, "Oh, give me your math." And yeah, like, yeah. Eddie's like, "Nobody fucking says that." I go, "Nobody says that around you because right. you're fucking Mexican. They're not gonna say that." The first math time is I, the last thing a Mexican guy's gonna say to me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you know, the first time I heard that, somebody said that to me. Yo, so I was on the subway, right? I got this is my New York accent. Yeah. I was on the subway, right? And so, you know, this I saw this little, you know, this little, this little check. She was shorty. Deaf, little shorty. She was deaf, and I was like, "Let me get her math." And I was like, "What did you say?" Yeah, yeah. He said, "I got, I got her math," and I yeah. said, "That's some fly shit." Yeah, I'm taking yeah. that back to LA. Oh the yeah, math is amazing. Yeah, yeah man, math is tough. Yeah. yeah, you get it right, Court. 
I mean, what? Like, what? Just tell me what I can say and what I can't. No, like, what's your man? What's your man? What's your man? What's your man? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your digits. It's yeah. like yeah, the same yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me yeah. your math. Math is yeah. numbers. Yeah. 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 But I, I mean, I'm not gonna. It's. I'm I don't not, think you're gonna say. Well, you're no, a married I'm woman, not. first of all, and. I mean, <laughs> hey. Hey Russ, maybe we can create something now. Like, if we just change it and start saying, like, yo, I want to get your numerals. Give me your numerals. Is that cool? Is that what? Well, you're married, and I'm about to be, so it don't really make any sense for yeah, us. Yeah, not for us. You know, <laughs> maybe we can say it to other dudes. Yo, let me get your... Uh, you could just say yeah. it in a professional sense. Yo, slide me in numerology. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hey, let me get your algebra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do in the Middle East. <laughs> yeah, right? <gasps> you want algebra? Mm -hmm. I have a question, though. I actually don't know how, how you guys met if you're in towns next to each other. So I was dating this girl when I was a teenager called Kendra. And oh yes, yeah, she was a girl I was in love with when I was a teenager. And so I, and I was dating Kendra, and Kendra said to me, "You got to meet my friend." Ru he wasn't a comic at this point. Mm -hmm. She said, "You got to meet my friend Russell. He's the funniest person in the world." That's what she said. And um, I think at the time you were, I, she knew you more of a DJ kind of guy. You were, yeah, music. I was DJing. Yeah, and she said, "You just got to meet my friend Russ." She lived around the corner from me. I just thought she was the prettiest girl in the world. Yeah, and she was amazing. She really was. Um, she was cool as shit, and I was like. I want a cool girl. This is like, like the that. '80s when, I, when 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 she cut her hair she, short, she buzzed it, but, and it was dyed. So like the peach fuzz was dyed a color, and you're just like, man, you don't see, we didn't see girls like that. Certainly not in our neighborhoods. And um, and I just, yeah, I just fell for her. And she, that's when, that's how I met Russell was through her back in the day. And he wasn't a dick, and I wanted to hate him. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, I'll meet him. Oh, he's <laughs> fucking cool. Wait, how was, old were you guys? Guy. I think I was 17, 18 at the time, maybe. Okay. Yeah. 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 I must well, no, then I, if you, you were, might have been 16 because I hadn't started doing comedy yet. Unless, yeah, you no, no, I would have been, been 16 because, I, because that's when I was dating her. 16, yeah. Yeah, because I just, yeah. yeah. I would have been, been 18. I was a year away from starting. <sighs> and yeah. then I got a job. I, at that time, I was working at the movie theater as an usher, and so cats used to come through. Um, but our friend, do you know Angelo? Have you crossed paths with Angelo? No, Angelo's on his way here, actually. Is he? Big Ange. Yeah, Big, big Ange. So I met Ange because I was um, dating this other girl who said, you got to come to Yuck Yuck, that same bar that he was at. And said, my friend Angela's doing a set. So I said, cool. And I'm dating this girl. We go to the, we go to Yuck Yucks. And Angela, because I have a Greek last name, Angela had a Greek last name. She's like, you guys should meet. So I'm like, cool. Well, you know, Angela did a great set. Angela comes and joins us at the booth afterwards, and we're talking. And Angela's giving me the fucking look. And there's a certain look that a Greek guy will give another Greek guy where you just like that dirty look. And I'm just looking at him like, what the fuck are you giving me gears for? And I went, are you, fuck, are you fucking, are you with her? And he says, yeah. And I went. I'm with, who the fuck's that guy over there? And she said, that's my boyfriend. So both Ange and I were like, wait a minute. You brought me, a guy you're with, to another guy you're with, show while your boyfriend's sitting at a table over there. And she said, yeah. And I was like, fuck this. I had, I had a bit of respect for that because I thought that's a real move. Yeah. But I, that's how I met Angelo. And so Angelo, I figured, I'm not going to hang out with you well, anymore. You guys are but, dick but, brothers? But, well, I didn't say that. But we <laughs> that's that's how I got to meet Ange. And then Ange, and so when Russ... And Ange were friends. That's how I got reconnected with Russ was seeing him with Ange. Yeah, I've known Ange since 94. Yeah. You slipped in a slang, too. You didn't think I caught that when you said, you know, what, what are these gears for? Yeah, I, I was like, this, oh, shit, I'm about to gears. use it. Give yeah, me the Canadian Is that, is that old? Yeah, it's a Canadian yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm, old, yeah. I'm bringing it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving them gears. I don't need your gears. You know? yeah, don't, don't give me the gears. Don't, don't give me your gears. Okay. You're shifting on me, you see? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yep. There's some Canadian slangs that are hilarious, like... Like when, when white guys get mad, I'll fucking kick your head in. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll kick your head in is one of my favorites. Yeah. Goof yeah. is like a, a trigger word over there. Yeah? yeah. Somebody oh, calls yeah. you a goof? Oh, yeah. Goof you is like punch the word. Me in the mouth. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the word. I'm like, I never understood it. You fucking goof. Yeah. And they'd say it like really fucking goof. Like, you fucking goof. Because Canada, so, it's so small. But right? like that's it, the it, jail word over yeah. there. Yeah. That's punk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, you call him a fucking punk, you know? I, I haven't been to Canada. I went to Vancouver when I was about three or four years old. That's it? You don't with remember? With my parents. Very, pictures. I see the pictures and I kind of yeah. remember. I'm not sure if I do or if I yeah. just remember the picture. But uh, I've been wanting to get to Toronto. I will not go to Toronto unless I go with Russell Peters. You or George. Yeah. Shit, George owns that or, city or, too. Or George. You can come with both of us. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have fun. We'll yeah, have George fun. and I, we do hang out back home too. Yeah, yeah. I was at your house uh, last Christmas. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, 2019. 20, was it 2019? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. I was just sitting at home watching TV by myself on Christmas, and he calls me like, "What are you doing?" So I'm just watching TV. He's like, "Come over." 
Come over, have food, right, yeah. eat with us, yeah. hang out. So I just went over and just chilled with him. It was, it was good. He held my baby. I held your baby. That's right. Yeah. You know, it was nice. fantastic. Yeah. Now, this guy's very generous anyway, so. Nah, he is for nah sure. it's he bullshit. Is. No, he is. It's a front. Yeah, I mean, you, you would think it's a front. You really would think it's a front, but it's like this. It's like, you know, you go over his house and you feel comfortable and it's like, hey, man, I want to go check it. We'll go upstairs and look at it. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. just go look at it. Yeah. And I'm like, but aren't you going to show me around? No, just go, man, just walk. You know, and it's it's rare that you find people that are that open mm -hmm. and honest. You know, I, my theory is if you're in my house, I know you. Right. And I don't want you to feel like you're in my house and I don't trust you. You're here because I trust you. Yeah. If I can't trust you to walk around my house by yourself, yeah. Well, then why the fuck are you at my house? Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. he's and he's always been like that. Yeah, always been like that. It yeah. should, you know, you shouldn't. I don't. I don't. I don't like being paranoid. Remember, you had that house. Um, you had the house across the street from where I ended up living. Um, in the Coanga side, and you had a key, oh, yeah. you had a keypad for yeah. your lock. And when I would be coming to LA, you just text me the keypad. And I would just go, and that's I would crash to the house. Yeah. But I would go there, and then I would walk in, and somebody else would be there. And then eight minutes later, somebody else would pop the keypad in, and you just let you let a lot of people stay there who are just trying to make their way. Yeah, because I was on the road anyway. I was like, well, I don't want this. I didn't get this damn house just to be selfish with it. Yeah, and uh, that was house like, was dope. It was it was it was a pain in the ass. The street it was on the steepest street in the world. Oh my god! Man. Remember a car flipped over right beside me doing yeah. a U turn. Oh, yeah, wow. it's the steepest street I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> but I bought it because when you were walking up the stairs, you could see the Hollywood sign out the window. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. And I, I used fun. to wake up every morning and look out the window and go, "Holy shit, I'm here." I'm here. That's right. Yeah. I remember having. Uh, I, I remember. I would go back to Toronto still, and I had this nice new house in the Hollywood Hills, and I would still travel back to my townhouse that my brother and I lived in, <laughs> in Woodbridge, and my bedroom was small. It was a bed on a on a frame. It would have no like it didn't have no like no bed box to spring. it. Yeah, it was a box spring and a mattress <laughs> yeah. on a those metal frames. Yeah, and it was pushed against the wall so I wouldn't fall off the bed. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, and the clothes were piled up on the floor. It was like a fucking teenage boy's yeah. bedroom, and the bathroom was across the hall. It was like, it was like my first house. And I remember waking up one morning and and going, "Fuck, I think that LA shit was all a dream." I really believed it was a dream. Right? Yeah. Like I got and, a house there. That's nice. I and then I was the like, "Hollywood oh, that my ho I feel like that Hollywood shit was a dream." <laughs> Oh, well, it was a good dream. That's and then cool. my brother was like, when are you going back to LA? I go, fuck, not a dream. Good. All right. Yeah, <laughs> See you. Yeah, it was nice. That's was the fun part when it first happens. Yeah. Not that it's not fun now, but when it's all, everything's brand new to you, yeah. it's so nice. Yeah. That's why I think comics are always pushing the envelope to try and find something new yeah. so we don't, we don't get stagnant. Yeah. Well, that, this is one of the great I challenges. I think it's a, probably a creative thing. I think you're right. And it's one of the great challenges in my life is that everybody in my life has grown and evolved and we all change a little bit. I still feel inside. I'm still that guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm still as energized by the new experience as I've ever been. And L.A. is a crime scene of a city and I love it, <laughs> but it's a crime scene. Yeah, jo and, George had some dark shit happening. Yeah, oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, for sure, for sure. You want to talk about it or not? Well, I can if you want. Yeah, yeah go to sure, it. Yeah. Tell him what happened. Oh, just one of my closest friends got murdered in my home across the street from that place where oh, he used to live. Yeah. That happens a lot. Yeah, yeah it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But wow. um, like while the friend was just staying there. Yeah. Oh, it's just wow. a random break in and the guy got him. Yeah, Homeless yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. On drugs, yeah. broke in, beat him to death. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty gnarly. Pretty gnarly. That's but horrible. It's a horrible story. But what what's interesting is that I that's I always knew L.A. was like that. And then it happens and you're like, OK, this is awful. We're still going through the trial. Right. So it's still going on. The whole yeah. thing. But but I still, every time I, I, I would get off that plane and I would, I would hit LAX, especially in the old days, Terminal 2, because yeah. you hit Terminal 2 and you're outside in eight seconds. Like, yeah. there's no right. long ass Terminal 2 was you're, nice like that. So nice. You're just here and you're outside. Mm -hmm. And I, I've never not felt that thing when I get off the plane. It's amazing because I, you know, I've been here my entire life. I don't, I never saw, I saw a couple of drive bys. Yeah. You know, I saw it with, you know, with my own eyes, but I never felt. That way, I'm terrified when I go to New York. Yeah, are you? I yeah, see, I, I got a place in East Village. I never worry a single thing about New York. Oh man, I'm scared of New York. Really? I, I went to Philly for the first time, and Philly's rough. Philly was rough, but the roughest place I've been in in uh, well, Detroit's rough, yeah. and, and DC was surprisingly rough. Yeah, DC used to be murder capital. Yeah, see, the first time you know, um, in that neighborhood, I said, the first time I ever got shot at, I was I think in grade. Four. You got shot at? Oh yeah, more than one. At? At? Yeah, in grade four. I never got shot um, at. When I was walking across the park from my 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 grade school, remember that which is now the Sikh Temple? 
used to be called Malton Public. Yeah, yeah, the one on on um, on uh, Airport Road. On Airport Road. So it was in the walkway between those two places. So I kind of grew. Yeah, up. Yeah, my cousin lived right across the street there. Yeah, that's where I got shot at from those apartments in there when I was. I was honestly, I was in grade four at the time. Yeah. So um, and I was lucky because I grew up in a home. I didn't. I, I grew up with a, raised by a single mom. But for that brief moment that my father was around, like he taught me how to clean handguns at four. This is all he could pass down. Yeah. But on he was fire- an Egyptian Greek. On fireworks days, you know, like whatever we, our holidays where people would shoot fireworks in the air. We didn't have fireworks. He would just shoot fucking handguns into the air. We lived in the neighborhood. Like yeah. people lived there. Just pop, 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 were pop. Were you in pop, the pop. houses or the building? Uh, no, we were in the houses. We mm-hmm. were in the houses. What street were um, you on? Uh, that th- this was when I lived in Rexdale on a street called Greer's, right behind a Rexdale Plaza. But then in Malton, I lived. My backyard was Airport Road. So my backyard was Airport Road. I lived. Yeah, on my city. cousin lived. Um, I lived on the same street as Mr. Metro. Oh, Devin. Devin, yeah. You know I'm in the video for. Are you really? Did you know I'm in his music video for Who Says You Can't Say Yo to a Princess? I don't even remember the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so when I when I got to LA, like I, that's why nothing scares me. I was a video really, hoe, Ben. Were you? Yeah. Yeah. A lot you of a lot of, were you in a lot of videos? I was in that. I was in. Uh, I was in Fabulous's video for uh, This Is My Party. Yeah. I'm the pilot. Okay, I gotta, now I gotta look for it. Now it's I gotta look amazing. for it. I'm in a, I'm in a bunch of Canadian rap it's, videos. Going Citizen on Kane. I'm in a Cardinal video. I think I might. I don't know if I did a Cardi video. I, think I'm in, I'm I was in a, a Ghetto Concept video. Oh, amazing. I tell you, what, I was in a Any Heartbreak video. No additions. Any Heartbreak video. What? Really? Now when you go back and watch that video. Ninety-seven. Yeah. yeah. Shot at Eddie Murphy's house. Oh my god. Yeah. You know what's funny? That's when Allie, my lady, was dating Ronnie DeVoe then. Really? <laughs> she was living with him. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. That's why I, t- I made fun. I was on stage the other night, and I said, you know, like, like Bell Biv DeVoe said, or as I like to call him, Bell Biv. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, you know, we all, got, we, all, we all got some bodies underneath. Of course, us. of course. I, mean, I think I, that's, the good thing is I'm mature enough now to accept all these fucking yeah. things. You know yeah. what I mean? Before, it would been like, you did what? With who? <laughs> I'm yeah, like, fuck it. The shit I did, I can't judge nobody. <laughs> yeah, my my wife told me that uh, she dated a NBA player, but luckily, when I heard his name, I've never he was he was, obviously was a nobody because I never heard his name. So would I know him? Did he make the? You know what? I, I don't know if she would want me to say the okay, name. Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. the name anyway. No, you don't have to say it. I'll say the name. His name is his name was Allen Level. You ever heard of an Allen Level? Oh, Allen yeah. Level. No. Who? Yeah, I don't remember Allen yeah, Level. No. Uh, Nuggets. Nuggets, yeah. I had never heard of him, so she said, well, I dated. Man, he was pretty good. Was he really? Yeah. He would wasn't it, as good as me, I can tell you. Would it have bothered you more if he was like a, an all-star? Yeah. If it, what? If, You're if, happy if, she banged a loser? No, but I'm just saying, if, if, it, was, if it was like, yeah, you know, uh, I used to date Dr. J. No Fuck. Yeah, the biggest? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I guess you want to be the upgrade. That's what it you is. You want to be the upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I, when I got with her, I was not the upgrade. You had to you had to earn the upgrade yeah, status. Man. Yeah, when I met my wife, I was well. When I met her, we were I was trying to figure it out. I think I was in junior college. But yeah. when we got together, yeah, I was a struggling actor that didn't want to act. Right. So she helped you find your thing. No, you yeah, know it what? Was right below his belly button. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's not know, what I was thinking. Of. <laughs> I, I, I noticed that. Was Do you dread looking at your credit card statement every month? I don't blame you. Credit card debt is the worst. If you're stuck in an endless cycle of high interest rates and minimum monthly payments, Upstart can help lift that weight off your shoulders. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan, and it's all done online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. Unlike other lenders, Upstart looks at more than just your credit score. They'll also consider your income and employment history, That means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. With a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. And you can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash peters. That's upstart.com slash peters. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash peters. In 2021, mental health is finally a thing. And that's why we're excited to be sponsored by BetterHelp. So many people are struggling right now and aren't feeling like their normal selves. 
But therapy helps, and therapy doesn't have to be just sitting around and talking about your feelings. It can be whatever you want it to be. You can privately talk to someone if you feel like you're having trouble dealing with stress or if issues have come up in your relationship. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't even have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. And Culturally Cancelled with Russell Peters listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Peters. That's BetterHelp.com slash Peters. After the setbacks of last year, it feels so good to be doing shows and selling merch again. And if you sell stuff too, and you're selling it online, that means a lot of orders are coming in. And a lot of orders you'll need to ship out fast. And with so many people relying on online shipping, avoiding shipping hiccups is a must. That's why online sellers like you need ShipStation. No matter how much you sell, ShipStation makes it super easy to manage and ship all your orders from all your sales channels faster, cheaper, and more efficiently. With ShipStation, you can import orders from any sales channel, ship with any carrier, and automate just about any shipping task. Basically, ShipStation will do all the heavy shipping for you. And that is what I love most about it, because I don't want to have to think too much about shipping. That is some tedious ship. You'll even get access to discounts with major carriers, including UPS, FedEx, and USPS. ShipStation makes it possible for small businesses to access the same rates usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies without the contracts or commitments. And that's some good ship. So if you're selling stuff and shipping it, ship more in less time. Just use my offer code PETERS, all caps, to get a 60-day free trial. That's two months free of no-hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com. Click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in PETERS in all caps. That's ShipStation.com, enter code PETERS. That's ShipStation.com, enter offer code PETERS. Make ship happen. Well, Russell, you know everybody. So who who do you, who have you met or who do you want to meet that would give you that wow factor? Well, you can meet people. But but hang with them. Yeah, you want to hang with Hang with yeah. So, like, put their number in your phone. Yeah, who's, like... Whose math do you want? Yeah, whose math, math do you want? <laughs> I don't know. Come on, don't give me no levels. No, no, no. Oh, did I'm you say the levels? What did you say? Gears. 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 Don't give me no gears. Yeah. <laughs> or levels. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I've been really... I've, I've been able to spend some quality time with some fucking legendary people. Yeah. You know who I'd really want to meet? And, and George had offered this to me one time. He yeah. said, "You gotta come to my house. Robert Plant's coming over." Yeah, that had and I was like, "Fuck, he's really the guy I really want to meet and hang out with one day." And I'll tell you why. Not only because I'm a huge Led Zeppelin fan, but because Robert Plant's uh, ex-wife Maureen Wilson mm -hmm. is Anglo-Indian from Calcutta. Right, same as your family, right? Mm -hmm. And my mom's Anglo-Indian from Calcutta, and my mom is Maureen. Yeah, <clears throat> I said, "Mom, do you remember any Wilsons from Calcutta?" Yeah, I knew some Wilsons. And I was like, damn. And there's Wilsons in my family. Um, oh, man. But uh, he has kids with her, like three or four kids with her. And wait, and why did you come over that day? Because I had his show at Casino Rama that oh, night. right. And I had to drive up to Casino Rama, and I would have been like, and I'd just flown into town. I'm like, fuck, man. I was staying up in Casino Rama. I would have to drive down that's true, and then yeah. drive back up. That's a that's I, an hour and a half drive. I figured you have Robert Plant at your house. You got Ross. You got to come see this. You got. I know. Gotta come over. I, you got to come over. Was he cool? The coolest man. And I'll tell you, it was a real trip for because me because he he didn't seem like he had fun on Stern. No, you know, I had interviewed Robert once before, and we we got along pretty well. And so I think that's the reason why he was willing to come over. Um, but I still didn't think he was going to come over. So I get the call going. Yeah, Robert Plant said he'll come to the house to do an interview. And I went, huh? Holy shit. Because that's the thing where that joy that I have of all the music that I used to love and all the things that I still connect to, Zeppelin are as big to me as anything I've ever heard in my life. So yeah, to me, Zeppelin is 
when that when that Uber pulled up and Robert Plant got Robert out the Plant car, Robert Plant's an Uber. Yeah, <laughs> when he got out the car, I think it was an Uber. It might have been driver. When he got out the car, I was just like, "Fucking a." Yeah. You know, the other guy that I called um, was I called this guy that I uh, used to hang out with in high school, who we used to listen to Zeppelin all the time, and I hadn't seen him in years. So I, I just I said, is this still your number? He said, yeah. I said, you need to come over to my house uh, tomorrow. He said, why? Just, just come over. And I hadn't seen him in years. Yeah. And so he comes over, and I got to introduce him to Robert Plant. And I, was, I would have, pro- I don't know what I would have done. He would have known who you were. Robert Plant would have known who you were. I don't think so. I think he would have known who you were. Robert Plant's really, he's really connected to what's happening. He do you really have his math? I don't have Robert. Actually, <laughs> I have his. Well, I do email his person a lot and, and uh, regularly. And we'll get. Did he move back? He moved back to England, didn't he? I think he's in England. Uh, the, he was in Austin for a while. The other one was when James Hetfield from Metallica came over. I was in Standing Rock in South Dakota uh, a night before, and I got a note saying Hetfield will come to your house. And I was 11 when that first Metallica record tape came out. And I bought a bootleg, and he said, "Yeah, James will come to your house." We drove. We left South Dakota, drove all night through the snow, and I pulled into my house about a half an hour before Hetfield showed up. And when he got out of the car, I was just like, holy fuck, man. This is epic. Was he cool? Cool. Epic. He seems like the coolest guy in the group. Yeah. Hetfield's really cool. And one night, you would appreciate this, uh, 8.30 at night, I'm by myself. I'm just doing a radio interview. So mm-hmm. there was no crew. There was just me. There's a knock on my door. And I, cause I, have, I, and I just looked through the door. And there's, I have a window. And his face right there was Grandmaster Flash. Just face inside my window looking. And I really? went, come on in. Come on in. That's and crazy. So, yeah, Grandmaster Flash came in. And we just talked about those early days. And uh, he's really? an interesting guy. Interesting I, guy. I'm not a Flash fan. I know, but he's an interesting guy because he was there for it. He was there for a lot of stuff. Did he say oh, it was he, important to it? Yeah. Did he say ha ha ha? ha. No, that's Mel. <laughs> uh, wrong guy. You gotta understand. Same, same group though, right? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Flash was the DJ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who was doing all the cool tricks and quick turnarounds mm-hmm. and the juggling and all that shit. And Mel was the MC. Ah. Uh, Mel was the first. Is is noted as the first rapper. Yeah. Even before Curtis Blow. Yeah. But Curtis had Curtis a record from first, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Curtis was singing. Uh, no, no, he was he was rapping. Yeah. Uh, what was his first one? The Breaks? These are the Breaks? The Breaks, yeah. The breaks, yeah. That was 80. 80? Yeah. But Mel was like the first rapper like from back in the Bronx days. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so what's the story that how Sugar Hill Gang got the notoriety to be the first commercial rap success? Well, wasn't it Big Bang Hank? Who stole Grandmaster Kaz's lyrics? Yeah, it, like v- word for word, even word the for name, word. Yeah. even the name spells out his name in yeah. the song. Yeah, yeah. I'm the C A S N A O V, whatever the how to fucking spell Casanova, yeah. but <laughs> that's crazy. And I'm I'm six foot one, and I'm, I'm like Tons that's Kaz. You just described Kaz. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But I mean, Sugar Hill, that song hit, right? I think that 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 thing really hit. First rap song I ever heard. Yeah. You know, West Coast, so we didn't have we didn't have rap here. Right. Our rap came here late in the '80s, with you know when World Class Wrecking Crew and all yeah. those guys. Who was it? Dre- that was what? mid '80s. Mid '80s, mid '80s. Yeah. So yeah. that was like. But World Class Wrecking Crew wasn't a rap group. They were like R and B. Then that song "Turn Off the Lights." They had "Turn Off the Lights," which was a great song. See, but I thought they had a hip hop song too, or a rap song. Oh, Cabbage Patch. Cabbage Patch. Right. See, I when rap first in my neighborhood, hip hop was huge. Rap was huge, but I um, it was a lot of it was dance records and party kind of records, mm-hmm. and that didn't really resonate with me because I was listening to a lot of punk and metal at the time, so I didn't. The dance stuff wasn't that interesting to me, and I didn't like disco, so it was like not my vibe. Then we heard Ice T, and when we heard Ice T, we were just, oh, this is the guy. And Public Enemy, so we had PE and, and Ice T were floating in our head, yeah. and that was the shit that really, really kicked off for us in the neighborhood. And then Beastie yeah. Boys, of course. Yeah. But well, you know, we liked Run DMC here. Yeah. Uh, I loved them. I loved Houdini. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. UTFO. What, what year was Schooly D? Schooly, see, Schooly D was before me, yes. before I really got into hip hop. Schooly like that. D, we liked him because he well, was so 85, filthy. 80, late eighty five, early eighty six. We liked him because he was filthy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We just thought that like, we were like 12, 13. We just thought the Schooly D was amazing at the time. No, I just, yeah, I like I like PSK and Gucci Time and all that stuff. That's why the first person I heard on the West Coast just talking some dirty, nasty shit was Short, too short, oh, too short. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know I spent a lot of time in Oakland, right? Yeah. So. You know, when Short was up there talking, it was like gangster. It wasn't it wasn't good sounding melodic hip hop or anything like that, but yeah. it was like it was disgusting. Yeah. Short's <laughs> bitch. You know what I'm saying? And it yeah, was too like, short for me sounded like when I heard him, I was like, has this guy gone backwards in time with his like like rudimentary rhymes? Like, yeah. like shit we were doing in the early eighties. That's like, it. Yeah. Like it was shit you would say on your way home from school, like with your friends. Yeah. That's a game we used to play. Yeah. We would make up raps 
and would, the the goal was to make it not rhyme. When uh-huh. everybody was trying to be Dougie, but but different. No, it was that we would do, we would do it as a joke. We'd be like, I was so thirsty, I couldn't think. I opened the floor, I opened the fridge and got me a beverage. You know, <laughs> just, yeah. we, would, we would just do it like that. That's just, what early Easy E sounded like too. Oh, Easy E yeah. couldn't rap. Yeah, no, you know, he just had that little voice yeah. that was kind of cool, mm-hmm. crazy, yeah. you know. Yeah. But um. And Snoop, same type of thing, you know, with that voice. <laughs> no, but Snoop could rap. Snoop could rap from the gate, but Snoop had that voice, yeah. though. It was like you had mm-hmm. never heard that. It's so much drama in the LBC. Oh, so, you know what I'm saying? So it was just something, yep. oh. <laughs> 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 just something smooth. He's the Michael Franks of rap. I had a beat up old Volkswagen Fox, and I got the cassette, the doggy style cassette, and the chronic cassette, the first one. And I remember putting it in my car, and I heard it, and then I put it in my friend's car. And heard it that next day. I had full subwoofers in the car. I had to change because it was Snoop and Dre. Where I'm like, mm-hmm. my my subwoofers are not going to live up to the West Coast sound because it had the G funk. We like Parliament, right? So yeah, we like yeah. Parliament, and the New York rap sounded fine in our cars. Even the BDP stuff sounded fine, but once West Coast it wasn't hit, as much the, of the low end. Yeah, we had to go get new subwoofers, and we our tens became twelves, and the back of our car got pulled out just so we could keep up with what was coming out of the West Coast on tape. Yeah, I mean they, they they you know they cemented their way into the business in a in a crazy way. But you got to give the you got to give the props to Dre and uh, oh yeah, Easy Ice Cube. Ice Cube's voice was like something I had never Ice heard. Cube. Ice Cube changed my life with America's oh, Most Wanted. Yeah, that man. solo record changed my life. That was mm-hmm. it. I listened to it all the time. I saw Ice Cube in 1990 at the concert hall in Toronto. Oh my God, and I didn't know he had left NWA. I just thought he did a solo album. Right. And I just got back from England, and I had on an America's Most Wanted T-shirt. With the K, same font as the album, but it was, it was a black t-shirt with blue writing. Yeah. But I was standing side stage at that concert, and I was like, holy shit. And then somebody was wearing an NWA hat or something in the audience. And Ice Cube was like, when Sir Jinx was with him. Yeah. And he was like, yo, do you see fucking NWA up here? Take that motherfucking hat off. Oh, man. And they took the hat off and destroyed it on stage. Oh, really? <laughs> It's ain't NWA, motherfucker. Yeah. This is Ice Cube. America's this is the lynch life. mob, motherfucker. <laughs> and now he lives right around the corner from Ice Cube. How about yeah. that? Yeah, that's it. The irony. I, I, you know, where, how far is he from you? Like across the street? He lives across the street from me. He's like two doors up and across the street. And um, How far up? Uh, he's directly across the street from that house. You know the house that right. you like? You have to go up that street? You have to go up the driveway. So you can't see his house from... He lives on a flag lot. Right. So you got that... That driveway you go up, and if you look up the driveway, you can see OJ. <laughs> oh. Not a good initial to be on on your front, the front of your house, but that happens oh. to be his initials yeah, that's too. It, that's right. Okay. He shares yeah. them with someone else. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> OJ <Orange> Jackson. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, he lives right up the street. I see him from time to time. Uh, not like I when I moved across the street, I was like, oh shit, I'm about to be down with Ice Cube. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he invited me. No, check this. He invited me over one time uh-huh. to play basketball. Right. I probably said something wrong because I haven't been invited back, but. He invited me over, and we beat me and my boy. We beat we beat beat their team, you know. Wow. And because we didn't know you're supposed to take it easy on Cube, right? And so we played and played and played. And then afterwards, he goes, "You guys want some beers?" I'm going, hey, "Drink beer with Ice Cube." Yeah. So I'm sitting on his little his little patio in the nice little plush patio furniture, and he comes out with this tray with Coronas on it, with mm-hmm. with limes in it. I was like. I don't know fucking Corona from Ice Cube. I thought I was getting a 40, right? <laughs> you the nigga I love to hate. What the fuck are you doing bringing me a Corona? And I haven't been invited back. That's it. I think that might be the <laughs> did reason Did you say why. that? Is that why? I did say that. Oh, but I was joking. Yeah, oh. yeah. I was like, you the nigga I love to hate. What the fuck is these Coronas? That's probably exactly the reason you haven't been invited back. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't been. I can't say that. Yeah, right. But it was a Canadian guy who put that you record out. A Canadian guy put that America's Most Wanted record out, Brian Turner. Really, kid from Winnipeg. Um, he is the guy that in the movie where Ice Cube goes and smashes up the office with the baseball yeah. bat, which that never actually happened. And when they audited that guy um, to see if he had stolen any money from Cube, it turned out not only did he pay him every cent, he paid him more. So, uh, but that's a Canadian guy who's the only guy that was willing to put out um, that NWA record, put out that Ice Cube record. Really, yeah. Those first four albums were incredible. Incredible, man. I would look forward to them because I. That was the only album. Those were the only albums I would look forward to the intro. Yeah. And the interludes. Yeah. Because yeah. the interludes were the best on those. You know, you won, G. 
won what? The wet t-shirt, t-shirt contest. contest. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember, I, I remember think the one, that all the time. Uh, that fucking thing. Remember the one he used to do? What was the one he said? He would say, uh, he was like, yeah, you know what we used to do? Jack the motherfuckers for them Nissan trucks. Get your motherfucking food, leave it in the car, get, get out. Get the fuck out. <laughs> so JD's Gafflin. JD's Gafflin. That's that was it. on Kill It Will. Oh yep. my God, I love that yep. record so much. Uh huh. Yeah, that was yeah. Kill It Will. I remember they, they would I, wait for a guy. They, they rob the food in the drive-thru, but right? leave the cu- leave the food in the car. Leave the food in the car and get the fuck out. I, I saw. I remember. My Easy buddy e. Ooh was telling me about how they actually used to do that. He yeah, said they would wait for you to get boxed in, then they would do it. Yeah, they wait till there's a car in front of you and a car behind you, then they'd pop up front on the corner. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Popeyes on La Brea. People used to get shot in that drive-thru line all the time. On the remember the yeah. Fat Burger yeah. on La Cienega, right? Yeah, at, yeah, absolutely. That yeah. was the one. That was the one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Midnight, everybody meet there to you know to rendezvous at other places, but that was the meeting joint. Now it's Fat Sal's on on uh, Highland. Fat yeah. Sal's, yeah, Fat Sal's in Highland is like you go there one o'clock in the morning. That's where the shit it's open. And I pulled up the other day, guys got a van to play video games in the back of the van. Yeah. It was the spot, and it we, was safe. Fat Sal's. Have you been to this one? I don't like it that much. Yeah. I mean, I just want a regular fucking sandwich. I don't yeah. need tater tots and cheese sticks on it. Yeah. That's funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I, I ordered the Italian sandwich. I go, I don't know. It doesn't, it's something's wrong with this sandwich. Right. I love Jersey Mike's. Jersey Mike's is not bad. Yeah. If you're going to go, I, I don't like Subway too much. I liked Quiznos when it was around. Uh-huh. But Jersey Mike's, yeah. Jersey Mike's. I love Jersey Mike's. Back home, I love Mr. Sub. That's my first job on Airport Road, Mr. Submarine. I used Submarine. to work at Captain Submarine Did in the you? Bramley City Center. I was 14 making subs at Mr. Submarine on Airport Road. I oh, yeah. loved it, man. Yeah. I know the one you worked at, too. Yeah. That was my regular one, right around the corner from my high school or grade school. It was kind of like at the corner of it was the corner at, uh, Dairy and, and Airport, right? Yeah, I and mean, it was well, it was one block over, and it was the corner building. It's where that uh, um, Nino Diversa Bakery was, where yes. the Mob Bakery. Everybody yeah, thought yeah, it was yeah. a Mob Bakery. Yeah, um, and our neighborhood was this weird mix, right? Because there was also bikers around. So you, on the other side of the, the airport road, so you just never knew where the danger was coming from. But we, and our and our sub shop was right in the middle, and I'm 14, closing the place by myself, just waiting to get fucking robbed, waiting to get robbed. Never did though, never did. Our place had been hit a few times, but it was just that street was fucking scary. I remember, must have been like five, eighty six. Yeah, must have been like sixteen, fifteen, sixteen, working at Captain Submarine in the mall, mm-hmm. and then like girls would come in and order their sub, and I would. I'm like, you want whatever they like wanted mustard, and then I would write, you're cute in the oh mustard. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> or I'd put my phone number, and then I'd put the bread on. <laughs> oh, you're not going to get the number now. There you go. Did you guys really have Mounties? Oh, yeah. N- well, yeah, but you don't see them. No. I mean, I mean they're, they're cops. Oh, okay. They, so they yeah. don't, they're yeah. not sitting around in horses and all that fucking weird they're shit. They're not like Dudley Do Right? No. <laughs> but when I got did you guys have Dudley Do Right up there? Yeah, of course yeah, we yeah. did. Okay, I didn't know if it was like something they just sent abroad. What I didn't know is that when, when <laughs> I when I first moved out to British Columbia for my first uh, well, my second radio job, I didn't realize that they didn't have local police, that it was Mounties that were their police. The Mounties <laughs> are a, a real statement of white supremacy though. They were essentially created to displace indigenous peoples. So when if you go to the very beginning of the creation of the Mounties oh, wow. It's a it's some bad shit. Yeah, it's some bad. I mean, it's the federal police. I guess there are they are FBI. I guess there are FBI, right? Do we have CSIS? No, CSIS are our CIA, aren't they? Is that what it is? Actually, I don't know which one. Yeah, I think yeah, I think there are more like our FBI, our federal cops. We just had, uh, um, you know, LAPD, <laughs> and that shit was crazy. I'll tell you, I'm okay. I, I, as a, as a white guy, as a white presenting ethnic, I can't even comprehend what you had to go through here because LAPD are scary to me and I've been fucked around by them and beat up by them but I can't even imagine what it would have been like in the 80s here you know what it was crazy but I never had any problems you know I was always I was raised you know you got to talk to people polite so when I used to and I got pulled over and I've been on the ground before right. many a times you know but I always knew how to talk to yeah to that's them. how it's, I think that's all it is it is <clears throat> it's how you respond to them yeah you'd be a smart ass of course they're gonna yeah, rough oh, you, you up wanna, oh yeah you want to play this game okay I knew how to do this how are you sir Good afternoon. Did I do something wrong? What would you like my driver's license? I would volunteer everything. But were you scared when you were going through that? Yeah, you know what? Because you heard other stories. Yeah. You know, I was never abused by a cop. I'm gonna let's just be very clear. However, I was told to sit on the curb. Yeah. I I got pulled out the car one time and I was wearing all white. I remember this, and they told me to get face down in the in the street. And I said, well, you know, with all due respect, so is that necessary? <laughs> I mean, really get down on the ground. I, I've got all white. He says. Hey, look, I'm doing my job. Get on the ground. Yeah. I did it. I get back in the car. There was, I, I did nothing, yeah. right? And he says, 
He looks at my license and he goes, oh, and by the way, happy birthday, Mr. Evans. I was like, this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but the sheriffs were just as bad yeah. as the LAPD. Well, CHP is worse, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The CHP and the LAPD don't get along. I, I found that. I didn't know that was a... No, they don't like each other. I didn't know I, that, yeah. That's such a weird thing to me. I was like, I thought cops were cops. I didn't know there was... I, I've had way better experiences with CHP than I have with LAPD. LAPD, I've been... I have had no bad arrested. experiences with either of them, yeah. Yeah. to be honest with you. I but I always sure. give them the big eyes and the... I, I, I never question what they're telling me. So Did I'm you know so, you were speeding? I mean, I knew I was going fast, but I was not aware of how fast I was going. That's what I do. I always, I, I, I always let them be right. You're right. Yep, I do the same I thing. I don't fucking challenge them. I came off the uh, the 101 to the 405 here on my motorcycle, and I was just trying out this new race bike, and I just thought, fuck it, I'm just going to see how fast this thing goes. So I was going, and I was going fast. And I come off the on-ramp, or, or like the transition to the 405, and I'm moving. I don't know how fast. Maybe I'm going 100 in, I don't know, 20 miles an hour 130 miles an hour something like that on the motorcycle just fucking whop down the highway and i see uh chp on a motorcycle in front of me so i eat the brakes i don't want to pass them right if i pass them i'm gonna get i'm losing the bike i was going so fast so i just eat the fucking brake and i pull up essentially beside him in my lane i don't pass him so he doesn't know how fast i'm going so i'm riding and i look over at him and i nod and he nods at me and then he looks at me and he says go yeah like i'll let you go and i went yeah and I said, yeah, okay. So I hit the throttle just a bit. Ah, I take off. Woo, 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 woo. Turns the lights on. So now my helmet wasn't even on properly at the time. So I crack my helmet off my face. And I go, what the fuck? Now we're moving down the 405 to the cop. And the cop looks over and he says, I said go. He wanted me to fly away. And I went, okay. And I cracked the throttle. Ah, Shot away from the cop, and I can see him just give me the thumbs up. Oh, that's dope. He just oh. give me the thumbs up in yeah. the rear of your mirror. That's that's the only time I felt that safe around CHP, though, was on the 405 on the bike. Yeah, that wouldn't happen yeah. to me. It would have been, been a different story. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, that was white privilege. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was white privilege yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, but you're kind of brown. You're not that white. No, I'm not. Physically. I mean, my dad's from Egypt. Yeah, definitely. But I present white to. Um, yeah, no, you know, I get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I got lucky that time. Yeah. But I got pulled over in Hollywood, and, and she had some questions for me, and I was I was very polite for about 20 minutes, and then I wasn't anymore, and then I was on the ground. I moved to the Valley. I don't have any problems with the cops anymore. No? None. I get pulled over. I did something. Yeah. <laughs> I, just straight I, same up. with me. I'm like, I, I probably did it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't have any problems. You know, when you, when you shameless plug, when you drive a, a more expensive car, yeah. you would like, think. Like, say your name's Bentley. Yeah, yeah. Name after an expensive car. <laughs> Absolutely, and then and then you acquire and one. And his son Rolls Royce. Yes. Um. <laughs> and then you know, so so you drive and the po police get behind you. You're like, they're gonna pull me over, and they just drive around on bottom, go like this. The perks, I like it. Oh, my greatest cop story was in South Africa, right? Oh man. We're in uh, we're in Joburg, and there's this guy. He was our international agent, and he was driving the car. So it looks like he's driving about or a bunch of NBA players around. We're rolling through Joburg and we pull into our, our hotel and the police pull us over. And this this black guy gets off his, you know, gets out of his car. He, he walks up, he goes, license and registration. And the guy that I'm with is white, he's South African, Italian. Oh boy. Right? And so he gives him he, he gives him his license. He's like, What is the meaning of this? What is well, I don't understand the meaning. And so the cop goes, you've been drinking? He goes, well, you know, well, I've, I've had one one glass of wine, and I'm in the backseat going, no, no, you haven't. You haven't drank no, beer. nothing, nothing. <laughs> yeah. And so the cop goes, get out of the car. And so I'm in the back going, hey, man, don't worry about it. We'll call the Italian consulate for you, you know. To get oh. you. And, he, and the, the guy goes, he looks in the car, and he looks at me, and he goes, get out of the car. And my wife's in the car, too. She goes, don't get out of the car. I said, are you crazy? A cop's telling me to get out? I'm getting out. Yeah. So I get out of the car and he goes, walk with me. So we walk to the back of the car and he goes, what the fuck are you doing with this guy? It was the, it was the, ex it was the exact opposite of what would happen here because he was right. black, right? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, who the fuck is that guy? I go, he's my agent. He goes, are you a basketball player or something? I said, no, no, my agent for, we're trying to sell some TV stuff here, right? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, you know, next time you're in South Africa, you should take the Uber because I'm taking your friend to jail. And I was going, man, don't take him to jail, man. He was like, I gotta take him. To it was like some crazy backwards Whoa. shit that would happen here in America <laughs> if I was white. And he goes, I gotta take him to jail. And I said, man, we're leaving South Africa tomorrow. He goes, you are, but he's not. So I said, man, can we? 
what, what, what do we have to do? Can I, can I give you some money? He goes, oh, you want to pay the bill? I said, yeah. He goes, all right, reach your hands down in the, in the trunk of the car. He opens the trunk, and he says, now take the money out, put it down in the trunk. And he counts out this money. He goes, hey, man, you can't be rolling around with these white guys out here, man. Shit, you're a target. Catch Uber next time. And he lets us go. I had to give this guy like 500 US. What? Yeah. That's wild. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was the wildest shit because my man was scared. He was sniveling and I was laughing so hard. I was going, Edward, you going to jail. You know that, right? I am not going to jail. I have done nothing. And you're I, in some <laughs> alternate reality where you're like, I cannot yeah. believe this I is couldn't, not LA. I saw white privilege go bad. Yo, I thought I was getting, I thought he was going to take me to the back of the car and shoot me or some yeah. shit, right? And he was like this. What's up? What's, who's this guy you're riding? I'm like, what? Oh, man. <laughs> it, was exact, it, was, it was crazy, man. I was reading that you had like a funny sign off when you were with your first TV show I about a funny sign or off? like a, a sign on or something. What? I never got to with hear it, but it was about like you being like that you were Canada's music? boyfriend. Oh yeah. So I used to, I used to introduce myself on the air as your boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. Every night. Yeah. Well, you know, and how it's actually kind of uh, timely how it happened when I was working at much music, which was like MTV at the time we, um, I was doing the news. So I was reporting on stories that's happening in the music business, but it was in that era where, a lot of the pop stars and the pop culture entertainment television started to change. And I kept being asked to do stories about who random pop star was dating. And I was, mm -hmm. I didn't, I was, I didn't feel comfortable with it. I also thought it was kind of bullshit. And, you know, and I was still in that and still am. I listen to the kind of music where I respect artists. And so I want this to be about the artists. And they were like, no, you know, people care about the girlfriend, the boyfriend. And I was like, fuck that. I don't want to talk about Britney Spears' boyfriend. And it was about Britney Spears' boyfriend. And I said, I remember saying this to somebody, do you notice we only ever talk about who the girls are dating? We never really talk about who all the guys are dating. I said, it just doesn't seem right that we're doing this. Like, no, like, people want to hear about Britney's boyfriend. So I went on the air going, fuck it, I'm your boyfriend. And that's how I started doing it. And then when I left uh, Much Music, I went to do a talk show. I just said on the air as a kind of a joke, I'm your boyfriend. George is a holdover. Never thinking I was going to keep doing it. But I got a letter from somebody in the audience who said, please don't, is a guy, he said, please don't call me your boyfriend because I, don't call yourself my boyfriend because it confuses me. And I remember thinking, no, oh. fuck it, I'm going to keep doing it. So I just started doing some it. Some guy and it got just, confused by it? it? Just some guy got confused by it he, when I called it boyfriend. And I was like, well, no, listen, now, clearly there's some weird kind of, I don't know what you're <laughs> going through, if that's homophobia, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> so I just didn't like the way, that, so that's how I started calling myself your boyfriend. And then it stuck because... Uh, it was CBC, so a lot of older people were watching. I don't so, remember this. Yeah, that's why I used to do it. And these like ninety-year-old women would be like, "You're my boyfriend," <laughs> and so it just became the thing. And I was happy to do it. It was, it was kind of cute. It was a nice break. Yeah. And so Brittany was the first. She was the inspiration. Brittany for that? was. It's Brittany, bitch. Yeah, yeah, Brittany was the well, inspiration. Did you guys watch that? The, the no, but the New York use, Times. They um, used one of my interviews yeah. in that. They used an interview I did with her, part of it, and they kind of take it out of context. But I just ran a clip of it because I was trying to warn Brittany back then. It, it's sort of. If you listen to the clip. I was asking her, like, do you have people around you that are protecting you? And she's like, my family, my family. Mm. I felt badly for her, man. She was a kid, kind of a shell of a person in the way she was treated. Yeah. And the media were horrific. Yeah, to they her. were terrible to her. Horrific yeah. to her. I that whole generation, they weren't very nice to. No, not at all. And, and, and the media need to own up to the shit that they did. I made lots of jokes on the air that I probably wouldn't make today, but I, when, it, when I sat down across these, I, did n I never treated Britney like that. Never treated pop stars like that. I tried to avoid most pop stars in interviews because I didn't think you could do a real interview because yeah. they were all part of the fucking wheel. And I thought that's go be with somebody else. That's not the game I want to play. But I, the media were horrific. Well, that's Britney. why I think it's interesting that you said that though, because like I, everyone was talking about how people would ask her questions when she was a teenager, like, "Oh, sir, you're still a virgin," yeah, and awful. you're, you know, oh my god, yeah, why awful. the fuck are you worried about that? Yeah, I'm 12. Awful. Yes, I'm a virgin. Yeah. yeah, awful, awful, and they don't. But that's the truth is entertainment media is is shit. And it was shit then and it's worse now, but it was mean then. At least now with social media, there is there are repercussions. Because mm -hmm. now the audience can hold you accountable. Yeah. yeah. And you can also yeah. somewhat defend yourself. Yeah. yeah. If you're misrepresented. You, yeah, yeah. But if you're being attacked, you can't. There's you can't. no recourse for you. No, yeah. no. And Britney was treated awfully by people. But again, I don't have. I didn't have a lot of time for pop stars because I, I thought they were courting this bullshit game. And if you play the bullshit game, you can't be mad when the bullshit game hits you. But she was a kid, and so it, her, the responsibility was not on her. It was on the people around her. She was a Disney kid too. Yeah, yeah. which wasn't fair. It was. It was. She was treated terribly. 
treated terribly. But um, but, but you had to, I I knew Miley Cyrus was going to go the way she went. When I saw her as a kid on what iCarly or whatever it was, like no, nah, she was Hannah Montana. Montana. Whatever Montana, it was, yeah. fucking, I don't know. Yeah. I don't watch that shit. But, but iCarly was better. I mean, uh, uh, she was uh, Miley was better protected. I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you knew yeah. she was going to go that way because her dad was a big star. Yeah, yeah. Her dad was a good guy. I, yeah. ne- I never met him. Billy Ray's a good guy. I know he was in Toronto a lot. Yeah, yeah, he was, and he was a he was a he was a really nice, generous. The thing he did with little, little Nas X that's no small thing. That's a big thing. That's a yeah. big thing what he did for little Nas X. And, yeah, and 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 Billy Ray is pretty rad. Yeah, but yeah, the thing about Much Music was Much Music didn't always get it right, but it was still there was an era where we actually really cared about making sure the artists were good. We didn't want. We thought being a good human came first again we did that's a canadian thing yeah we didn't always get it right though like a lot of times shit got wrong for sure when you look back i think we've deteriorated in over there into in, into what because the media what we, everything we didn't like we became yeah usually canada is about 10 years behind the u.s in terms of its uh, its trends usually um, i think they're now maybe two yeah it's accelerated yeah, it's it really two years has. now it really has i always heard canada was like the nicest place the nicest people the cleanest I don't, place i don't know about that i mean it's definitely clean but we're polite yeah we're polite yeah. but i don't know about the nice part i i don't yeah. buy that yeah i mean we're de- we're genuinely nice people yeah. but and where russ and i are from that's the thing about and i and i think america goes through the, the united states goes through this as well where we're from the rest of canada is not like where we're from and where the rest of canada is every part is pretty different mm-hmm. but we're from this really multicultural west yeah. side of our city it just it was a very unique place. We weren't yeah. far from the city. Yeah. Yeah. But yet we were far enough. Yeah. 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 Well, can you guys tell me what Carabana's like? Uh, I heard no, the Carabana story. used to be. It yeah. Best. It was the used best weekend be in the, the city. Shit. The best in the city. Yeah. 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 It used to be the best. It was <laughs> incredible. <laughs> it's, it was really incredible until people started shooting at it. And somebody got run over by one of the trucks one year. Oh, was, wow. But you'd be I don't street. know why I'm laughing at that. I don't mean to laugh at that, but like it, it changed it all. Like they, the parade route used to be on university. And that yeah. was so much fun. You'd be on the I don't even like Calypso when I would Every go. Every artist and, would come up. Every artist would come oh, up. Oh, yeah. Just to have a good time. Like Caravana was amazing. I'd never been to Carnival in London. Have you ever been to that? In Lon- in uh, Nottingham? Yeah. Notting Hill Carnival? I've never been to that. I never, I, I went, I think I went like on the day before, the day yeah. after or something. Everybody was like, oh, you don't want to go? It's dangerous. So I was like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And I went, to, I went to some parties from it. And I remember when Kiss FM, this was like in 1990, when Kiss FM it used to be a pirate station. Then they had yeah. gone legit. Yeah. And they had like this big party. And it might have been in one of those parks, like in Notting Hill Park or something like that. And LL performed. And that's wow. when Mama Said Knock You Out was out. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit, I'm watching LL here in London. And it was pretty dope. Oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. And I was like, how'd they get him? Did you listen to BLK? Yeah, of course I did. When we were kids, we... WBLK was a, a station at a Buffalo. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was WBLK. I think you can figure out what station it was. Well, yeah. I wonder what that means. Yeah. BLK. It was K94. It was amazing because, we, we, you know, there were no radio stations in Toronto. I mean, radio stations weren't playing hip-hop in Toronto until well into the 90s. Well, mm-hmm. no, we had the uh, the underground. like the, Yeah, the, yeah. The, Co- like, the yeah. college radio stations were yeah. really keeping it alive. Yeah, yeah. but like mainstream yeah. wasn't doing it. But BLK is what we would hear. And that was like, the music was fucking incredible. Hmm. And because of where we lived, we lived out of range from the one college station that was like CKLN 88.1. Yeah. They were the ones pl- on Saturday, Ron Nelson, this guy had this hip hop show from one till four every Saturday. Yeah. But where we lived, you couldn't pick it up on 88.1. So if you took the unscrewed the cable from the TV and taped it to the antenna, you'd pick it up on 93.5 yeah, or 93.7. Yeah. We could listen to the American stations at night, but when the sun came up, we would lose the signal and the interference would come in. So late at night, you could put on and catch the U.S. stations. And, and also, you know, in our neighborhood, a lot, I don't know, Brampton, but in Malton, um, a lot of guys had cousins in Philadelphia or in uh, New York. Yeah, so, I would have. Uh, so my, tapes my, would come up that yeah. way. He'd be like, oh, you going to New York? Yo, record the radio for me while yeah, you're there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I first heard Go See the Doctor. Ah. Go, Go see, see the, the doctor. doctor. And I, I don't, I think it might have been Red Alert who was cutting it up that night. Back amazing. and forth. And I was like, yo, I got this. It was, must have been 85, 86 when that happened. Uh, 86, because I remember this girl, well, this white girl from school was going, I'm going to New York. Anybody wanting? I go, can you give me a Kangol and record the radio for me? Hilarious. We couldn't get certain shit out there. Couldn't get it. Like, we couldn't get the, 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 the Clyde Pumas. Yeah. The suede ones. Yeah. Like, they were really hard to find back then. I remember the first day a guy in our neighborhood had the first Jordans. I almost wore my Jordan ones, my OGs here today. 
But I the very first yeah, yeah I got the I got the OGs the eighty fives and yeah. I was gonna wear them up the red and blacks the red and blacks and I remember the first time somebody had them people were, like we would go to our front door to look outside to watch a guy walk down the street with the George. he had the full suit and like, that guy Billy had the oh, Pumas when I saw him I was like yo how do you get the Pumas <laughs> isn't it amazing what Michael Jordan was able to do with that shoe I mean I mean. It's questionable if he's the greatest of all time. I, I would have to say yes. I think he is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I mean, I'm not a basketball fan, and I'm very aware of how good he was. Well, are you aware of how good Kobe was? Uh, I mean, I knew he was very popular. No, he was actually good. He was skilled. LeBron is also a very skilled player. But I also know that Kobe worked way harder he than did, everybody else. Than everybody. Yeah. 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 I and think I Jordan, think that's always the key for me. The Jordan thing is that he six for six in the final. Yeah. Never lost in the final. Also, never a game seven in the final, which means nobody ever had a chance to win the title in front of him. Never. And I think in his entire career, Jordan only had two game sevens or two or three game sevens in his whole playoff career. Yeah. So, like, the, the the reason why he's the greatest to me is that his kill his kill rate was just no one could have that kill rate. He, don't, well, he didn't lose in the finals. Well, and then on paper, you have to say Kareem Abdul-Jabbar by is numbers. the greatest. Yeah. By numbers. Yeah. If you're just looking at uh, pure numbers, but... No, no one's walking around with some air Jabars. Yeah, but also yeah. Kar- Kar- Kareem's <laughs> cultural impact. I mean, to go from Lou Alcindor to Kareem, I yeah, mean, that's a really big thing at that time yeah. as well. I mean, yeah. unbelievable. I knew Kareem literally from Game of Death. Yeah, oh, it's the only was way I knew so him. Good. He was great in that. Yeah, I knew him from Game of Death, and I knew him from Airplane. Ah, yeah. Like I never knew him as a basketball player. I mean, I knew he was a basketball sure. player. Yeah. But I had never watched him play in my life. Same with O.J. Simpson. I didn't. I mean, I knew him from the Hertz commercials. Yeah. yeah. I knew him because he played in Buffalo. Yeah. And I knew him from the Flintstones. Remember when they had O.K. Simpson? Yeah. Oh my God, that's right. I forgot about <laughs> O.K. Simpson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We loved Kareem, but we loved Dr. J. You know, but Jordan changed our life. Like yeah. Jordan was like Jordan became kind of everything. Yeah. I, I think Jordan is what made basketball more mainstream in Canada. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think it was Bird and Magic that transformed the game to make it commercial 100 and then jordan took it to a different level yeah. i didn't understand the bird and jordan th- uh bird and magic thing until much later but i knew that they were rivals and i was like i thought it was a black white thing Mm-mm. yeah i was in la when uh the bulls beat the lakers in the final that first time um and i remember because i was uh i got tickets to go see a taping of arsenio hall and Scott, oh, wow. scotty pippen was on and i always remember that arsenio's joke in his monologue was he saw James Worthy in the KFC last night, couldn't even buy a bucket. And that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, hilarious. And we laughed our ass off. And Scotty came out. And I remember thinking how interesting it was that this is LA. And you brought out Scotty, you brought out the bull? You brought out the bull? I remember thinking what a big move that was for us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you didn't bring out the bull. I wouldn't bring that guy out if I was. Hell no. <laughs> And that ended up being my first interview in my career. My one-on-one interview was with Scotty Pippen. Huh. And that's how I started my interviewing career. I've but heard from servers that they call him no tip and Pippen. Is that what they call him? Oh, <laughs> but I heard Jordan does a tip. Really? Yeah, because I, I, I don't understand that. I mean, that's, no, that's the part generous. that bothers me. It's like, like, I guess they look at it as it's your honor to serve me. I'm like, no, you can't fucking do that with people. Really? Yeah. People so, you like, you're them. literally... You know, they look at it as they sign the bill. There's my autograph. Like, sometimes what makes you great as a killer on the court makes you a dick in life, too, possibly. But I got to tell you, the last dance, I mean, I loved every Incredible. second. I, I, I cried through all too. of it. I loved it so much. And I was a reporter at that time for the NBA. Um, and so reliving all those players and Horace Grant, all the storylines. Oh, God. Incredible, Horace man. Horace Grant is an oh, RB <laughs> Oh, really? Is there a hard R- beat? Oh, that's Horace Brown. Horace Brown. Yeah. 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 Interesting times, man. Oh, get, I'm putting my hands on Grants like Horace. Uh, I get it. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, he's no, he doesn't have a son. His uh, Harvey Grant, his twin brother, has a son in the NBA now. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. Fun. A couple of them, I think. Yeah. What a run that was, though. Oh, the fact that we got to see that Bulls team play, and every team had two that could be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Every team had two players. Every night, you're like, that's the best. That's the fucking best. I mean, the Utah Jazz never won a title. Yeah, that's what's crazy. They didn't win a title. They had two of the best players ever, ever, ever. Who they have? Carl Malone and John Stockton. Carl Malone's the nicest guy I ever interviewed in in sports. Here's the funny thing: Carl Malone is a distant cousin, a real distant cousin of really? mine. Really? And I can tell him how we're related, but I've I've only met him once, and he was so big. Yeah, he's so when he big. walked in this restaurant, I was going, <laughs> "Now would be a horrible time to say, hey, man, you know your grandmother and my grandfather. You know they was brothers, you know.'" But I was like, ah, "I'm not gonna do it." So. Um, you really should. 
I want to. Uh, the pumps are going to introduce me to him, but it, it hasn't happened yet. But uh, I want to just. You got it. But, but you, you, you're close to magic. Yeah, man. Ma- magic is. Uh, anyway, the magic 60th birthday. I mean, to, to me, like I, I in Saint Tropez, Brazilian celebrities in my life. I never, yeah. ever, ever get. I don't get starstruck. It's not in my DNA. But Magic Johnson. He's the one. He's the. Yeah, Magic's the one, man. Like when magic, I had, I, I had an opportunity to meet him. And I made Eddie meet him instead. I was like, really? Eddie, there's Magic Johnson. <laughs> oh. I was like, it's not going to mean anything to me. It's going to mean more to you. The cool thing about Magic is when you meet him, it's like you've known him your entire life. There is no pretentiousness whatsoever. He's going to say, hey, what's up, dog? Okay, sit down. Yeah. Oh and he's so cool. And I remember sitting in Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles the first time with The Magic. one on Gower? The one on Gower. Yeah. And Magic said, man, meet me at Roscoe's. Oh. And I was like, okay. That's my magic voice. <laughs> Why is magic so dr- jive with you? So, so oh, shit, turkey. Hey, man. man. And no. if these suckers give you a problem, <laughs> well, you, know, you magic, tell them you ain't take no slack, Jack. Ma- magic was, he comes from that 70s era, you know. Yeah. And so magic is, got, he's got that. He's only 10 <laughs> years older than him. Right, he that's it. Did he? Doesn't he talk like he goes? <laughs> yeah, magic. I had I had guys that I knew who played for the L.A. Kings at the time, and they mm-hmm. got to fly under the radar. And they said that Magic was the best to them. He is. He was so nice to all the hockey players, but that Magic lived the life. He really did. Magic, like, everything you could squeeze out of this life, he did it. That's all yeah. I said. Yeah. No, man. Listen. I always say that's the way to do it. Yeah. It is. I don't want to. I I always say I'd rather live a life of oh wells than what ifs. What's that Sam Kinison joke? If you're going to miss heaven, don't miss it by two inches. Yeah, right. You know, like, miss it. Yeah. yeah. You know, miss it for real. And I and I think, I, I don't know, not that Magic's going to miss it, but that, well, he is, because I don't believe there is a heaven. But Magic. I'm with, I'm with you. Yeah, like, oh. but <laughs> Magic was the guy that they, everybody knew him just said, if you ever were going to have a career like Magic's, you would do it like Magic did it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So you said there's no heaven, right? Both of you guys said that there's yeah. no heaven. Yeah. So I think I've asked Russell this before. So, do you think that when it's over, it's just over? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing That's else? It. That's it. That's it. Yeah? Why should there be something else? I don't know. I think because it's just, we want there to be course, something else. Of course else. we do. That's that's the only reason we made it up. Well, here's what I think. I think that I think that your energy will live on, right? Yeah. But I don't, but I don't think your energy is conscious. And I don't I think consciousness is a is a human creation, right? Through evolution and adaptation. So the so our energy will stay in this biosphere, it'll as it always has been, but I don't think we'll know it. I think you know the. I don't like. I would think it would be dope if something else happened. Yeah. But I think when the lights go out, the it's lights not that go we out. don't want anything to yeah. happen. But sure. Yeah. We're more realistic about it. Like. But I think that the energy kind of goes and does its thing. There's yeah. absolutely you zero know? proof for any of it. Like so, not so even a little bit of proof. What about what? Okay, so what about ghost and what about? Uh, I was gonna say ghost. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I live in a house that people think is haunted right now, and there's some weird shit that happens in my house all the time. And someone that I was doing a live stream, and somebody asked me. Are you afraid? And I said, I'm not afraid because only two things can happen. Nothing or fucking everything. Yeah. And if, if it's nothing cool, then it's on brand with where I'm at. Right. But if there are ghosts and something does happen, everything's different in my mind. Right. right? Now there's yeah. another. Fuck, I'm here for that. Yeah. I, I'm here for that if that's yeah. real. I, I think yeah. that if, if, if it does exist, they don't they choose not to show themselves to me because I've, I've got people all around me going, man, you crazy. You don't believe in ghosts. Man, I'm telling you, my aunt came. So I go, oh, yeah, your aunt came to visit you. Is that right? So what <laughs> what was your aunt wearing? Mm-hmm. Well, she had on this gown. I saw also her ghost. I saw her gown had a ghost, too. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Because if, if it was a ghost, she would be naked. That's right. Oh, because come on now. I mean, just think about that for How a second. How was auntie's yeah. titties? <laughs> The, the, I just I just imagine that w- one of the nice things about getting older is you look back at life and you just think, oh, the, most of this is bullshit anyway, right? When you get older, you just realize there's, it's not worth fretting over shit. So if you're going to die, if there's another plane, if you're going to die and go to the next plane, are you going to really look back to the bullshit that was on this? No, you're on a fucking other level. You're not coming back here. Yeah. That's why I don't think that shit's happening here because if I if I die and I suddenly get to live in another plane... I'm done with this place. Yeah. I'm on to the next adventure. Uh, yeah, I, 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 my, I have another theory where it's like, okay, let's just say there is something else. Let's look at it. This is a video game we're in. Yeah. And uh, level to level. Level to level. Yeah. That's interesting. You're out of this yeah. level. You move on to the next level. I can see that. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I can live with that. Yeah. Did you guys grow up religious, both of you, Russell and I mean, George? My mother's a fundamentalist Christian. Okay. Hardcore. Hardcore. I was Catholic. We weren't like, it wasn't beating over our head or nothing, but, mm. you know, Christmas and Easter, we would have to go. And I would always, even as a kid in single digits, I would sit there going, something doesn't add up in this yeah. thing. 
you call them the CNEs, the Christmas and Easter's. My, yeah. The joke in my family was my mother used to be Catholic, then she found God. Like that's how. <laughs> that's hilarious. That's how religious my mom is. Yeah. But she's so religious, she doesn't even think she's religious. She's like, I don't have religion. This is just what I know to be true. But I'll say this about my mom. And your mom, his mom's a really sweet yeah, lady. Yeah, she's too. like, she is exactly what, when people criticize Christians, they want Christians to act more Christian. My mom is the embodiment of what you want people to act like. Like she is the, she quit her job as a nurse because she thought, this is in the 80s, because she thought doctors were over prescribing patients pills and she didn't feel comfortable with that. And she decided to no longer earn money except getting a paper route and shit like that. So she could just go work on behalf of people. So I will. I would come home from school and my bed was gone because my mom would give it away to a family <laughs> who needed it. Like my mom, that's her life. And to this day, she does that stuff. My mom's like the Christian. Right. Right. And then it drives her crazy that I listen to the music I listen to and I just can't have the, I just can't. Huh. I, just, I just don't believe in it. Right. Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, she's really, were, were you religious? I mean, similar. There was a time when I went, you know, like when I was a kid, I probably went to church and stuff more and whatever. But it was like Mother's Day was a good time to go to church yeah. as well. I think my mom was just like, I can feel like I did something and then we can go to brunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I had I, I had cousins that were all churchy and it was always weird to me. I had to go to church all the time. I went to Bible camps and Christian camps in the oh. summertime, all that stuff. I didn't have to go to church a lot. My mother, my mom didn't beat that down our throat. So it was like, you know, occasionally we went and then uh, my oldest sister got saved and then my my other sister got saved and then it was, was like... falling out a window? Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so... You bitch on fire or something? So then I, then I started going to church as a teenager because it was a social thing. Yeah. You know, it was pretty girls hanging out in the church and yeah. stuff. And so I got all into it, you know, for a little bit. I got saved. I did the whole thing. You did that? Oh, wow. Yeah, man, I did all that stuff. Hilarious. And so... Like dipped in the water? Did you get the baptism? I got baptized, but they did it with the cross with the water on the head. I didn't get dunked. I didn't do the dunk. I made my kids... I didn't make my kids do the dunk. My wife did. I was like this. They don't have to do that. They don't want to. I could see see his son doing it, too. Oh, ma, I got all wet. (laughs) That's how my son talks. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Bentley Jr.? Oh, my God. The kid's the most laid-back talker you've ever met in your life. Oh, hey, George. You can't even get mad at him. I'm like this. You didn't take the trash out like I asked you to last night. Man, I forgot. (laughs) (laughs) You just go, all right. He's figured it out. Yeah, he he figured it out. (laughs) He figured it out. Respect. That's dope. Yeah. He got a tattoo. The first time I saw his tattoo, you know, of course, as a parent, Mm -hmm. you flip out because even if you got tattoos, you still feel a little weird like when you're you're doing well because he's he's making decisions now and i saw that tattoo and i said what the fuck did you do and he goes well you know i I was in new orleans i said but why did you do it he goes because i wanted it what could i say to that that's amazing i said carry on i mean what could you say what is it yeah um well he's got he's got his whole chest done now but he really yeah the, he's the most clean cut looking kid you've ever seen. I can't even picture him with a tattoo. His chest is done. Good news he, is I've never seen your son without a shirt off. There you go. And I don't want to. Well, you might see him in your pool or something. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he'd wear a t-shirt. How old is he now? A uh, 21. And what, what, what's his? Uh, does he have a thing that he likes to do? What does he he's want? Well, he's acting. He's, he's an actor. actor. Okay. Yeah. He's a, he hangs out here. I met him because his son hangs out at my house. Oh, yeah. So, okay. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So he's a, he's a laid back kid. Did, did you did you offer any? advice about the game because you know this business so well i think i did but i think uh he'll probably listen to somebody like russell before he'll listen to me because he'll feel like you know his dad trying to tell me and you know they want to stick their chest out like they did it but uh you know kids are kids are tripped they'll listen to other people before they listen to their parents because i think they just don't want to hear it from their parents well not to embarrass you but does your son recognize how important the work you made is that does he know your your place culturally i don't think he does my daughter i think does but i, mean, I, I don't think my son does martin and jamie fox as sitcoms yeah i mean that's that's groundbreaking shit. Yeah. Yeah, but you got to understand, these kids are born like 99. Yeah, right. I guess you're right. Yeah, they don't know what we knew. Like, I had one uh, kid here. Um, I'm working with this kid on building an app, right? Yeah. And uh, he's, I think, 20. How old is that, Zena? How old is that? Like 20, 25 or 24. Really good kid. Uh, his parents are from Nigeria. He's born in Texas and he's moved out here. He's six foot nine. Mm-hmm. He used to play basketball and he didn't want to do it. He just wanted to be a web designer and right. get into the tech world. And I was like, I respect that. And he was asking me, he goes, hey, how, how good was Mike Tyson really as good as people say he was? <laughs> and I was like, 
Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. It's the greatest. Mike Tyson is the last benchmark. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Like, there's not been a Mike Tyson since Mike Tyson. No. That's true. No. And I, I was like, are you serious? He goes, yeah. Well, I mean, I heard. I, I go, oh just God. go watch his knockouts on YouTube. You'll, you'll understand. It's amazing. Yeah. Holyfield never hit that benchmark. I mean, obviously, he was the mic stopper. He's the only one that could just beat him convincingly. Great fighter. These are a lot of great fighters since, but not like that. Not like that. Yeah, no, there was something. Mike was 20 when he won the title. Yeah, but think of this. So when we were like 15 years old, we got Jordan, Gretzky. Tyson. Tyson. We got, um, it, we, people forget Bo Jackson. Uh-huh. Two sport. Then comes prime time. Dion. Like we had an era of athletes that are on another people can't do that anymore met a two sport athlete and be yeah. good in both sports yeah. yeah no one's doing that yeah there's no fucking bo jackson anymore there's no Deion sanders anymore can't no. do that no bo knows and we were kids when we got to see that we, we were yeah, so, but, yeah. and it, it became it, it's so we expected every athlete to be like that yeah so i'm a few years older than both of you guys i literally remember seeing ali fight oh my goodness yeah. I remember watching Ali yeah. fight when At I was a kid. End, yeah, it was a kid. It was, it was, he was old by that point. Yeah, it was yeah. late 70s when we were watching him. Like, you know, it was like the Ken Norton days. Did you, and did all you that. see Jim Brown? Yeah. Oh, my God. I saw, well, no, no, I didn't see him play, but I actually uh, worked with Jim a couple of times. Oh, so I never saw him play just the, just the, you know, the highlights and stuff like that, but I never saw it in person. I do remember Will Chamberlain playing, though. Jeez. I was in the kindergarten and he was playing for the Lakers. That's incredible. The high short era. The mythology, yep. man. Yeah, these guys were, I mean, these guys were everything. It's How did they stuff that much dick in high shorts? <laughs> I like to take this into the other direction, guys. I, uh... <laughs> well, you know, while we're celebrating him, let's not ignore the facts. <laughs> yeah. Let's look well, look at that great. pose right there. How does it not just fall out? <laughs> hey, do you think that he really slept with 20,000 women? I mean, I mean, I do. I don't think how how is that humanly possible? Well, let's see. Let, let, do do the math, Russ. Okay, you have to wait. I mean, I think you know. That's a big number. Those are big numbers, man. It's a big number. I'm, I'm just saying, no repeats. No, I'm gonna see you again on Tuesday. It was all new chicks. 20, 000, oh, that's interesting. I, yeah. I, mean, I, 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 yeah. That that when he put that number out, I remember thinking, number one, don't brag about it. Is he still alive? Don't brag. No, he about died. It. He mm. lived. He lived around here because I used to see him at the Ralphs all the time. Did you see Will. It? <laughs> yeah, I used to see Will push in the supermarket by That's himself. He picked up his, his women <laughs> at the supermarket. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Picking up some chick chicks, Ch chickens. Picking up some chickens. Twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Big numbers, well, man. What did Gene Simmons say? Gene Simmons threw out a number. Yeah, right? he did. Something Gene similar. Gene Simmons probably has a crazy high number he said too. It was a high number. But Gene Simmons, um, the challenge with Gene's, he said he used to always say he was un, he was happily unmarried for a long right. time, but that came to a head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, she, his wife yeah. put that to a stop. She did. And yeah. now he's born again. Is he? No, I'm joking. No, oh, I, don't know. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. We <laughs> lost another he's, one. He's born in Israel. I don't think he could be born again. <laughs> Somehow that checked out to me. I was like, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Gene. Gene Simmons. I guess they were pretty good. I wasn't a big Kiss fan as a kid. Were you a Kiss fan? I was a huge. Were you know that? I, I, I think I, I remember was a bit. huge Kiss fan. I wasn't huge into them. I liked a few of the songs back in the day. I, I wasn't so much the music for me. The music, yes, but. It was the whole thing. I was, you know, you gotta understand. I, 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 my first record that I ever got, like real record, that wasn't like a, a kids record yeah. or something, was was Love Gun. Oh, nice. Yeah. Mine was Black Sabbath Paranoid, my first one. Too what good. year did that come out? Sa oh, Paranoid came out in the seventies, but I got it later. I got it at right. a garage sale, a flea market uh, parking lot. Right. I got it, I think mine like seventy seven. Yeah, I got I got this record at the Bramley City Center. I saw it on, on the wall, and I said to my dad, "I want that record," and he bought it for me. Amazing. How yeah. were you? I was six going on seven. Yeah. Yeah, that's roughly the age I was when I got paranoid. Do you remember your first one? Yeah, I think it was probably Jackson 5, Going Places album. Um, no. <laughs> listen, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Amazing. Listen, listen. Amazing. No the, edge. Listen, the great. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that we could all agree, maybe. Let's, let's, let me throw this out there. Was Michael Jackson the most recognizable face to ever walk to earth? Well, which face? Well, all of them. <laughs> So <laughs> fabulous. What a fabulous joke. Fantastic. Oh my God. That's fabulous. I, I, I would say there are only two people in the world who never needed a passport. Yep. And Michael wasn't one of them in my mind. That's right. Yeah. Muhammad Ali. Right. And Ali. The, and the Pope. Pope John Paul. Well, which Pope? Pope John Paul II. Him and Muhammad Ali were the only two guys who I think could go anywhere without a passport. Right. Maybe Jacko was third. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. What if the Pope took off the hat and put on like a ball cap? Like he went <laughs> undercover? Yeah. 
I sometimes wonder if he ever did that. It's not go for pizza, had a cigarette, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Because he would have, he, I mean, I was going to say, I wouldn't recognize him unless he was wearing his whole getup. The get papal up. outfit. John Paul II, you wouldn't, yeah? No. 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 Would you? No. Yeah, yes, I, I was. I, was I don't think if that was one of your picks, actually, because I was like, I don't, I can't think of that face. Oh yeah, Pope John Paul could walk anywhere. That I like, can see his yeah, face now, yeah. but I, I don't know that yeah. I would recognize but him in, like a, in, in a fedora. Well, in the era when he <laughs> when he was the Pope, like that guy didn't need not need a passport. The only other guy was Ali. I think Ali is the most famous person to ever walk the earth. You think so? I think so. Yeah. Even with the little kids nowadays. Oh, that's you. You mean now? No. Well, Maybe not, yeah. you're right. Yeah. This was good, guys. This is Thank fun. Yeah. Wasn't this easy, Ben? It's fun, Thank man. You. Yorgo? Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for, thanks for doing it. Thanks, guys. You. Man, thank you, man. Thank you. Anytime. Man. We can, anytime we yeah. can get it together and talk shit. George, you have a new podcast, don't you? No, I have a radio show every day on Apple Music Hits. Oh, I every knew day. that. Yeah, yeah, every day. This is a true story. This actually happened a couple of weeks ago when I was in Tampa. Um, I went back to my hotel room after my show. Don't judge me on this, Courtney. I, um, She's looking at you, though. <laughs> I went back to my room, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to jerk off and go to sleep. Uh-huh. Now, guys don't jerk off because we're horny. We jerk off because it's the best way to get to sleep. It's better than Ambien and all that other stuff. It's like real simple. Knock it out and go to bed. Prostate you, health. There's lots of there's health considerations. Yeah, that's the real reason for my 50. <laughs> yeah, you know? so, but I'm not horny. So I get on Pornhub, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm like, no, I'm not horny, so I'm not getting motivated. But I'm on 45 minutes in yeah. looking, and I'm on page 87. Well, you, your, bar is, your bar is too high. Right. If you need 45 minutes. Well, no, I'm just looking for something that's going to stimulate me. Like, right. Well, that looks interesting. Oh you know what God. I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like, okay, finally I settle in on this one thing. It's a woman solo masturbation scene. Yeah. She's intimate, empowered. amateur. I'm like, I'm solo. You're solo. Let's do this, right? right. Yeah, yeah. I like fairness. Yeah, that's yeah. it. It's impor- important. You got, you got to change your habits. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, all right. I put it on. The volume's on. And this is where my ADD kicks in. Because it's amateur, she doesn't have like porno music. She has real music playing in the background. Hilarious. So I hear this song playing in the back. I go, what is that song? <laughs> what is that? And then the girl starts singing, and I go, oh, shit, she's got a great voice. I was like, oh, is this Adele? It's like a, an Adele song I don't know. And I'm like, I don't know, but it's really got a really powerful voice. So I get my phone, and I Shazam my laptop. Mm-hmm. Shazam can't find the songs. I'm like, god damn it. So I have to rewind the porn. <laughs> Turn the volume up more. Incredible. And and I'm listening for lyrics, and I open another page so I can Google the lyrics. While I'm f- and I find this artist from Ireland. She's a blues singer named Kaz Hawkins. Mm-hmm. K-A-Z yeah. Hawkins. And incredible voice. So I find her. I buy her song, and then I listen to her album. I buy the whole album, and I'm like, wow. And I end up listening to the album and crying myself to sleep. <laughs> 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 I just <laughs> wish that when you bought the album, there was an option that says, "How did you hear about yeah, us?" Yeah, yeah. yeah, you could enter that in the. I, I really box. want. I really want to message her and be like, "By the way, oh interesting story how I found oh you." That's funny. Man. <laughs> That's funny. I'll listen to Kaz Hawkins. Kaz Hawkins. Thank That's staying. Yeah. She's gonna find out. Yeah. Kaz Hawkins, if you're listening, she's in Northern them. Ireland. Anyway, that's uh, today's episode of Culturally Cancelled with myself, Russell Peters, my dear friend, George Strombolopoulos, and my youngest daughter, Bentley Evans Sr. <laughs> yes. Um, thanks, fellas, for taking the time and hanging out. And, and Bentley, stick around and have another cigar with us. And uh, George, uh, let's have some vegan water or something. I'm down. We'll do it. And thanks, Court and Eddie. Thanks for Fucking Eddie. Yeah, thanks, guys. Oh, uh, watch Dad Stop Embarrassing Me on Netflix on April 14th. April, April 14th. That. That's April the new 14th. show that I produced with Jamie Foxx. Right. Yes. Uh, Sitcom. Now, but he's not playing himself? He is playing himself. playing himself. Well, no, he's playing a character named Brian. Okay. But uh, but it's fun. It's old sitcom. Yeah. We just kind of went back, multicam sitcom. I don't know why he wanted to do it, but he did. And he called me, and I gladly took the checks. Oh, <laughs>